I'm gonna like get up a few times just to check it out. That's fine. Making, so. Today is 11 14 21, and this is our first torchbear session. Uh, Alright, so. Let me put you guys into the world real fast. So, as you know, you guys are citizens of this kingdom of ascension, the, uh, this mountainous region that houses uh, a couple large cities and then some smaller villages here and there. Uh, the, the kingdom of ascension is the entire world you know. There, you know that there's a, there are lowlands, but those lowlands are infested by monsters, and there's also tons of caves infested with monsters. You guys have been adventurers for a little while, long enough to know that being an adventurer is not the most glamorous life uh, and requires risks, and also long enough to have known each other for a while to the point that you do trust each other with your lives, with your personal effects, etc. Um, you've come to, maybe for specific reasons, um, or more general reasons to rely on each other uh, to, to quite a bit of an extent, and to and you all should see yourselves as running with this crew long term. And if someone dies, well, hopefully find a quick replacement. Um, I told you guys that our campaign was going to start in the city of uh, in the bustling metropolis of Spring Hollow, but in reality, we're going to go out a couple miles to a village called Skoganby. Skoganby is maybe like half a day's to a day's travel from Spring Hollow. It's basically, you could consider it like a suburb. Uh, it's a remote village, sort of nestled um, amongst those safer hills. And I think at least one of you is from Skoganby. I think Steve, you have your character. Yeah, Skoganby. I am. So uh, for you, Steve, this is a return to your hometown, so that might influence the reason why you care about what we're about to do. For the rest of you, you're going to come up with a reason why you care, and maybe that reason is as simple as I want money. But let's get into the details of what we're here for. You guys were traveling through Skoganby. Your plan was not to stop here initially. You were traveling through Skoganby initially on your way to uh to Spring Hollow. As, as relatively fledgling adventurers, Spring Hollow is a good region to start out in. It's a little bit safer, the jobs there are a little bit safer. Um, it's a lot different from going to, say, Winterhold, where the weather might kill you, let alone the dangers of the caves. Um, so you were passing through Skokenby, and for Elenendra... Oh, okay, maybe... For L... Yes, you were close. You were close. For L, this is like a. <laughs> Alara uh, Lendonel. Alara Net. Alara Lendonel. Alara Lendonel. Alara Lendonel. Alara Lendonel. For Alara Lendonel. All together now. <laughs> For L, this is a. You know, he might be guiding you through through this town, maybe mentioned, oh, we cut through Skogan, be on our way to Spring Hollow and get some, uh, you know, resupply before we continue the, on, on the last leg of our trip. Uh, where you're coming from, don't really, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't really care. Um, but upon your arrival to Skogan B, uh, you got, it's not a very happy village right now. Um, and in asking around, you find out what's recently happened. Skogan B is in a bit of a disaster state right now. Um, just a few days past, some youths were clearing out a new field in sort of deep in the forest. Uh, they wanted to, the field was for planting, and they managed to move a stubborn boulder off of the field, and when they did so, they revealed an ancient rune-covered dolmen, which was framing a narrow tunnel into the earth. Amongst these youths, one of them, a girl named Jora, who considered herself the bravest, decided to go into the tunnel through the narrow passage, and she disappeared for some time. She returned a short time later. Uh, from the far side of the passage, she, sh she showed her friends that she was carrying um, fat, heavy silver arm rings, uh, clearly worth significant value, and told them about moldering crypts rich in goods. But then, before she could crawl out of the tunnel, 
she was abruptly pulled back into the crypt with her blood-curdling scream. Her companions, the other children, they ran home as quickly as they could um, and told their parents about what happened. And in deciding what they should do, a curse befell Skogenby. The children, who had brought back some of the treasure that Jorah had tossed them before she got pulled into the crypt, um, they sort of brought the curse of this crypt with them to Skogenby. Since then, almost on a nightly basis, someone has died. Uh, in the morning, they, people come to find that their mother or brother or sons are, are in their beds, but they're like, their skin is completely pale and gray, their eyes are bloodshot wide open, and they are completely dead to rights. Dead. No uh, um, foul play involved? Well, um, it definitely seems like foul play, because all these people were unhealthy, but there's no physical uh, wounds on any of them. Yeah. It seems obvious that... Uh, well, the village says that they're cursed, it seems that something supernatural is happening to them rather than, uh, like a murder or something. Okay. When you guys arrive at Skogenby, they tell you this, they tell you all of this because they are absolutely desperate. They're hoping that maybe in an appeal to you, L, um, or, or sorry, an appeal to you or an appeal to the group in general that you guys will go rescue Jorah and lift the effects of this curse from Skogenby. And because you guys are a little short on funds, you decide, all right, or maybe you decide maybe it's the right thing to do. One way or another, you decide, all right, we're doing this job before we go to Spring Hollow. Okay. While you guys are walking around town, now we're gonna start this adventure at the dungeon, but before that, let me give you a little bit of background information. While you're walking around town, gathering some last minute supplies to go on this trip and talking to some people and doing some preliminary investigation, there's a couple things that you learn. The first thing that you learn is that this isn't the first crypt that's been found. It's the first crypt that's seemingly caused this sort of like curse to happen, but there's sort of a known quantity that bandits in the area do sometimes pillage these crypts after they've been found for incredible amounts of treasure. This crypt is probably no different. It probably contains quite a bit of treasure for you guys to take. The other thing that you, that's been known about previous crypts is that they tend to have to do something to do with the immortals. Uh, each one is either uh, the resting place of an immortal themselves before they rose to immortality, or someone associated with them, a, a, a great hero, a, uh, a high priest. Um, Okay, that seems good. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to tell you? There are a number of people in town who have various ideas about what to do about this Jorah problem. Some of them think that the best move is to just reseal the crypt, let J you know, leave Jorah for dead, and um, pray that that will How end the... She's been gone for four days. How is she not dead already? They have no idea whether she is or isn't dead. The hope is that you guys will rescue her alive or find her corpse. Everyone okay. in Skogenby, no one in Skogenby says, we hope you find her corpse. They all say, we want you to save Jorah. It, obviously, well, they she... are aware of the possibility that she could be dead, but no one's going to voice that. She, you said that these are children, right? They're, chi they're effectively children. They... The, the youths that uh, found the dolmen range from the ages of 12 to like 14. Jorah is the oldest okay. of them. She's around 14 years old. Um, 14 okay. isn't actually that young in Torchbearer. As you guys know, you can be an adventurer at the age of 14 as a human. Um, so technically speaking, Jorah would be considered an adult. Um, Crazy. Uh, a very, very young one. I um, mean, that's a lot of the ancient world too, but... Yeah. So, anyway, those are the things that you've heard about this place. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to write goals. Now, if you look on your character sheet, there is a section where you can 
uh, write in a goal for your character. Now, goals are something we decide we're going to try to accomplish in today's session. They're not long-term things. Um, so we're all going to decide, each one of you is going to write down a goal. It doesn't matter whether people write down the same goals, different goals, it doesn't matter really what your goal is, as long as it's something that you think you can reasonably accomplish in tonight's session. A couple good, here's a couple good examples. You can take them if you want, or you can come up with your own. Uh, I will, uh, I'll goal start with the word like I, I must, I will, I want to, things like that, you know? Uh, they're like small temporary desires. Uh, a good example is I will discover what happened to Jorah, or I will- Where, Where's the goal scan? Uh, oh, no, it's on your character sheet. It says under what you fight for on the left side. It's right about your instinct. Now. So, make sure you're in edit mode. Yeah, make sure you're in edit mode. Uh, I will loot this place for all it's worth. I will impress my companions with my bravery. Those are a couple examples of goals you can come up with. My recommendation to you is to think about what kind of character you have, like what their belief is, what their personality is like, the things that they care about, and then write down a goal that's somewhat associated. If you can't think what of anything, then you should write something like, I will loot this place for all it's worth, or I will survive this... this uh, this, I will not let this crypt kill me, or something like that, you know? How do you spell uh, Jorah's name? J-O-R-A? J-O-R-A. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Alright, cool. Is something like, like, for like, the scope of what's, like, achievable, would something be like, I will discover the secrets of the dolmen be, that, yeah, like, in line with what we're looking for? That's a great one, cool. yep. Do we, do we share the goals with each other, or do we keep that internalized? Um, I will want to hear your goals after you've said them. And I think you can roll the goals so that they show up in chat. Like, if you click the word goal when you're in the play mode on the sheet, it pops into the... Yep, perfect, just like that. Yeah, awesome. Those are the kinds of... Those are two really good goals. Like Silas will goal. discover the secrets of the Dolmen, and Dante will defeat the monster that took Jorah. Those are fantastic goals. It's Very the goal of wanting to rescue her that... No, that's Why? a great. That is a great one. Fantastic. That's should we have a creed at this point? I don't have one. You should not have. Okay. A you get that. Point. Creed is something we'll worry about when you guys reach level three. Got it. I want to rescue Jora. Perfect. Those are all really good goals. Do you really want to rescue though? Yes. I will earn the respect of the people of Skokenby. That is perfect. That is a really good one. As you know, the adventurers are not very well respected. So earning their respect is a good goal to try and accomplish with this task. Mm, Steve, when you talk about pizza, now I want pizza. Yeah, say a cash team. It was super awesome. good. It was stuffed crust. I uh, There's like a really famous pizza place like down the street from me, but I haven't actually been there yet because I've been going to the other really famous pizza place down the street from me. Was it Domino's? No. Oh. Pizza Hut. <laughs> Absolutely not. Was it Domino's? <laughs> And we support uh, local businesses in this uh, house, Steve. That's the values I want to find, Jorah. All right, perfect. These are fantastic goals. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do something everyone hates to do, but Torchbearer requires of me. You guys are going to pick a party leader for today's session. I'm going to tell you right no. now, I will expect absolutely nothing of the party leader. It is purely a tool for you guys however you want to use it. You could even, whether the party leader does anything at all, is completely up to you, but you guys do have to pick. The best way to pick, in my opinion, is to, the person who has the most compelling goal should probably be the leader of this particular okay. excursion. What is the most compelling goal then? Obviously saving draw, or? I don't know, you guys, what do you guys Yeah, I'm fine. I think saving Jorah. Okay, yeah, let's vote. How many you want to save Jorah? Ian and at oh, okay. So two people. Right? Um, honestly, part Steve, you're from like around here, right? Yeah, Skogenby is like my hometown. Yeah, I feel like maybe we should make Steve the leader since this is his like area. That's not a bad idea, actually. Are you cool with that, Steve? Yeah. And everyone else? I don't know. You want an elf spirit? <laughs> you're <laughs> right, Ian. Okay. Wait, are we all humans except Steve? Uh, cat's yeah. a halfling. Yep. We, if we halfling. Okay, okay. And we don't have a dwarf in the group. If we let the leader now, he'll never push. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so 
uh, L, you were going to be the leader. How You can use that tool however you guys want. Ultimately, you'll probably not use it very often, but maybe sometimes I won't use it at all personally myself, except for maybe like one thing which might come up. Um, anyway, okay, so once you guys have your goals and have prepared for all, you know, your inventories and stuff, you guys set out from Skogenby towards where the villagers of Skogenby tell you the dolmen is uh, in the forest. It's maybe like an hour's walk. It's a bit of a, a bit of a trek. Uh, but you guys are fresh from uh, the night that you stayed in Skogenby. Um, fresh is a condition you will not get very often, and we'll have to remember it every time you do a test. You always get plus one dice on every test you do while you're fresh. Um, okay, cool. Now there's a couple things I want to say before we jump into this adventure. It's basically about like what this is going to be like. Because there's a couple, I think, uh, Malia, for you, you're not super experienced with RPGs, so you're not going to come in with any of the like um, preconceptions about how to play an RPG. Um, for you, this is just a totally new learning experience. But for the rest of you, um, this is going to be pretty different from like Barb's or uh, what's another game I run? Just Barb's. 5e. 5e. Uh, did that once? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a little <laughs> bit different uh, from that in a couple of different ways. And my style of DMing, this will be different from my style of DMing those games. Mostly because Torchbearer doesn't really let the GM touch their narrative after they've built it very much. Um, so here's a couple kind of like how we that. played. What's up? Oh, I was gonna say, is it kind of like um, Despair Candle where we narrate? Are we doing a lot of the uh, narration, or is it sort of? To be honest, it's a little bit less like that. Um, okay. It's uh, it is a fiction. It is considered a fiction first game, but it plays a lot like a board game in some ways. A lot of the mechanics in this game are like very fixed mechanics that you interact with. But we'll get to that when we get to it. The things I wanted to say is this is a dungeon crawl. Unlike other dungeon crawls, there's a couple things you want to do differently here. First off, I know when we run other dungeons, you guys are used to like, oh, let's explore every room before we decide what we're doing next. I'm going to caution you heavily against doing that. You should consider traveling to the next room a serious, uh, like a serious decision, you know? You should try and exhaust the things that you, re that you think are the most important to do in the rooms that you're in before you proceed. The Torchbearer is very much designed so that early rooms give you a lot of clues or give you a lot of benefits you might need later. Or a really important thing is securing a room and making it safe so that you can go back to it later to set up camp is also really valuable. So don't progress out of a room into the next one until you're sure that that's the right thing to do. Um, now, when you explore a room, you guys got your character sheets in front of you. You've got a list of skills. When you're thinking about, I'm gonna give you a description of a room, okay? And uh, everything I say in that description will be of some value to you guys. Afterwards, if you ask me questions, the thing that my, those answers might not be necessarily of value, but everything I say in a description, when you initially enter a room, has some value whether it's a clue, something you can interact with, something you should deal with right away, et cetera, et cetera. An exit, an entrance, whatever. Um, when you're, after you hear the description and when you're deciding what you should do next, you should uh, look at your list of skills, think about the things in the room, and try and identify things that you can influence with your skills in an effective manner. When you, note it, when you see something that, oh, okay, I have this skill and there's this clue that I could investigate or this thing I can inter uh, interact with, you should speak up. You should immediately tell the party. What's gonna end up happening is every room is gonna be you guys just tossing in uh, ideas in a big brainstorming pool of what to do next. And then eventually you guys will decide on what the most important things to do actually are and what order you should do them in. But if you guys aren't tossing in ideas, we're not going to be able to, um, we're not, like, you, that, that's how you'll contribute in, uh, like, in a meaningful way. Um, so, that's the best thing to do is just speak up. Any, any, anything that pops up into your mind, you should speak up and tell the rest of the party about, like, hey, what if we did this? 
when you tell the party what you want to do, you have to describe it in as much detail as possible. This is really, really, really important. This is why this game is considered a fiction first game. If you describe what you're doing in, in, in a good amount of detail, and why you think the and like this is the like this is the method I want to use, and this method is effective. I think it'll be effective because of this. Like, oh, we heard about this from the, from the villagers, so I think if I do this, it might be a good idea. The reason this is important is because not everything you try to do will be a test. If you guys say I want to do X, and X is just such a it's like a perfect solution to whatever problem you're trying to tackle, I'm gonna tell you. Hey, that's a good idea. It happens, and you get to do it for free. Basically, you don't test. It doesn't cost a turn. It's a really, really valuable function. You want to try and eke out that's as many of these good ideas out of a room as you can How are you? before you start resorting to tests to try and figure things out. Okay, so that's why. It, but if you don't describe things in detail, I will never be able to give you a a good idea. So. Give me detail when you when you describe to the party like, hey, here's an idea of what we can do. Um, that is kind of oh, the last thing I should say. Um, keep in mind you will have to pay taxes when you return, and that's tough. Uh, so you guys will be taking risks in order to earn loot. Loot is worth the risk a lot of the time. Obviously, don't take risks that are too huge, but you should consider. Treasure is a valuable thing to risk your, maybe not necessarily your life, but your livelihood. Um, that is basically everything I wanted to go in. Um, we're we're gonna get started, and I will teach you guys how to play as we go. Um, Good. All right, cool. So here's what happens: you guys leave Skogenby fresh, ready to go, ready to find Jora, kill the monster, whatever your goals are. Um, as you are leaving, you hear a couple of rumors about potential bandits who, in the area who might also take an interest in the crypt. So some of the villagers warn you to be really careful. Um, they also mention that they hope that you will not make the same mistake their children did and steal from the crypt, because they believe that's what brought the curse to them in the first place. I would recommend ignoring that advice and stealing anyway, but it is worth knowing that the villagers do not condone that action. Okay, cool. You guys travel through the forest. And L, because you are a pathfinder, a lot of this is... I'm not going to make you test here, but you do guide the group through the forest. You're familiar with the area, but you also know what to look for. The sort of common way signs the villagers use to direct people in the right direction and whatnot. And you f eventually find the place you're looking for. The sky, when you arrive there, is dark and overcast. It's threatening rain. What you see are two rune-scrawled standing stones. Oh, actually, let me change the picture here because I have uh, like different background images for each part of the uh, each part of the adventure. All right. So yeah, what you see is two rune-scrawled standing stones, which are capped with a table stone and all covered in crumbling soil, it frames a narrow, forbidding passage into the earth. A torturously <coughs> twisted yew tree squats above the uh, passage. Its serpentine roots are visible along the ceiling of the low tunnel, and a dread chill seems to emanate from the stones themselves. Is there a woodcutting skill? Huh? What's up? Is there a woodcutting skill? Wood skill? Is there a wood carving skill if you want to make things out of wood? But there's no wood no, right. skill. I was about to say, can, I would uh, chop down that you. Can I just uh, harvest some seeds. berries? Um, yes. So, um, you got pockets why to don't put you be those a berries little in? bit more detailed? Mm hmm. Um, so I know. Well, okay. How much does my ink. So, Neville knows that yew tree berries are very poisonous, so I'd like to- I don't know if my character knows that, though. I guess I'm a scholar, that should I- like... a totally reasonable piece of information for your, anyone to know. Okay, cool. So I'd like to, like, just put on, like, um... I just, like, take part of my shirt to, like, harvest them and put them into, like, a little, like, baggie in one of my pouches, I guess. Okay. Do you have cool. enough inventory space, um, though? That's- so here's a perfect example. So Neville explained what he wanted to do. Instead of asking him for a survivalist test, I'm gonna just say, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a really resourceful thing to do. Um, 
you head over to the U branch. Now, this tree itself, you can see disease on this tree. There's this white light <clears throat> all over it. Um, it's... You're not totally sure how, like, uh, how, like, potent the poison in these berries will be, and there's not many of them. There's very few, right. there's very much less than you'd expect, but there's mm -hmm. a couple that you can take. Uh, enough to fill, you, now, Neville, you can take enough to fill a pocket, uh, or you can take yep. enough to fill a pack one worth of pouch. Like, a, if, if you have a pouch to put it in, uh, mm -hmm. pack one. They're all full, I'll just put it in my pockets. Okay, so you've got a little bit to put in your pocket. So that's a little bit of yew tree, yew berry mm -hmm. poison, which uh, you could, you know, feed to someone, apply to a weapon. There's a couple different ideas of what you could do to that. Cool. Finally, my tattoo of a yew tree is coming in handy. Knew that they were poisonous. I didn't even know they had berries. Mm -hmm. They're like small little round berries. So yeah, right now I've given you just the description of the red. dolmen. There's an obvious way to continue, which is down into the passage. But before you guys do, you should consider what I said. Think about, look, mm -hmm. look at your skills and think about, hey, what are what are valuable things I can do in this situation to either investigate what I'm looking at, or um, prepare for the next room. So, you said that the tr tree roots are kind of like going through like the entrance, right? Yeah, they're kind of you can. At the top of the uh, the ceiling of the passage, you mm -hmm. can see you the can... sort of blighted, twisted roots of the yew tree above the... Entrance. Right. So my worry is that the tree roots, like, might have caused, like, structural damage to the roof. I'm worried if we, like, go down, there's a risk of it, like, maybe collapsing on us. Do we have, like, do we want to, like, just assess it for, like, structural integrity, just make sure it's safe? But also, if the other children were able to go down, okay, they might have, it might be fine. Something I should mention too, now that now that you're looking at the tree roots, is the the white scabrous blight that's on these on this tree is typically indicative of uh, like undead in the area or undead energies. Mm. Could you um, explain the curse one more time? Sure. So this is a curse that the uh, people of Skokenby believe exists. They believe that right. because their children brought back some items from uh, Skokenby, that the entire village was cursed. And since then, uh, a single person has died of fright every single night uh, since Jorah disappeared. Usually the people who are dying are in some way associated with the children who went, who went to the crypt initially. It's... Uh, like a father or a brother or something like that. All right. And sure. so what happened was. Integrity. I suppose walking. So people. Oh, Wait, sorry. On. Go on. Sorry, Ian. One more time. Considering structural integrity of the entrance, walk. In, poke at the ceiling with sticks or something to see if it crumbles or if it seems sturdy. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. If we could find like a long branch to try and like poke, like from the outside, poke at the ceiling to see if like it suddenly collapses or sure. anything. Yeah, that's a that's another good idea. You guys, there's plenty of long sticks or branches in, in the area. You and even if, for those of you who have long weapons like spears, you can jab at the earth, the packed earth and rock of the dolmen, and it seems very structurally sound. It's a tight. Okay, it cool. looks like a tight fit. Like, you'll probably have to crawl on your belly to get through this passage, but the structural integrity, you it doesn't seem like there's any worry unless some sort of explosion happens of it, of it uh, collapsing. Um, what about okay. The, there are two stone pillars with runes on them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do they say uh -huh. anything? So the, I... the dolmen is it's two rune scrawled standing stones, and it's capped with a table stone. Um, a dolmen is literally like a stone gate. It's like three just big pieces of stone making a squarish stone gate. Um, the picture, none of the pictures, by the way, are going to do these, they're just, are going to match the description, so don't look at the pictures. Oh, anymore. this is what a dolmen is. Sorry, I had to Google it. I was like, oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Any word yeah, you know, okay. Guys, ask me about it or Google it. Um, but yeah, uh, what's it called? We saw these in, um, Valheim all the time. Yeah. When you, when you look at the dolmen, um... You can see these runes on there. Um, Silas, as an erstwhile scholar, 
you recognize mm-hmm. these runes as an ancient dead language. You don't think you can't read them, and you doubt anyone here will be able to read them. Um, unless I have an elf here. You do have an elf here. Hello. Do you have... It's a me. So this is not something I'm going to usually do, but because this is our first session, I'm going to try and give you a couple of recommendations of things you could do. Do you have the nature descriptor called remembering? Uh, I do. So one thing you could do is a nature test here to try and remember this language because as an elf you are you've participated in like a hive mind dream sleep and the elvish ancestral memories go on for generations so there's a chance that if you tap into your nature here a little bit and make a nature test this is within your nature so you could in theory try and figure out what this um what this is but that would be a test and just to let you know ahead of time that would be an uh, obstacle of four uh, you need four successes to to know what these runes mean without experiencing a twist or a condition in response okay and I have a nature of five so I'd roll five dice mm-hmm. yep and that's before people start jumping in with ways to help okay um sure why not let's let's see if i uh if i can remember how to read this language okay so i'll I'll tap into the elf hive mind so just so you know before we do this something you guys should all know is that every test you guys decide to do um takes a turn Now, right now, you guys don't have any light sources lit because you're in the daylight. Once you go down there, you will need to light light sources. But every four turns you guys go, something will... I'm I'm gonna describe something called the grind now, basically. Basically, here's how the grind works. Every four... Every test is one turn. Some spells and invocations can be like two to three turns. And sometimes a test, if you do it, I'll tell you, like, hey, it's going to take a little extra time. It's going to be two turns. But for the most part, every test, like the test Steve is about to do, is one turn. Every four turns, you guys will all get a condition. If you look at your character sheet, um, you're going to get conditions in a very specific order. So four turns from now, you guys are going to lose the fresh condition and that extra die you get from it and get the hungry slash thirsty condition. And if you look at that, with the effect underneath of it says minus one success to disposition in any conflict. There's a there's a roll at the beginning of a conflict that you do to roll like what your like what your current health is basically, or like how how good your position is to start out with. Now hunger and hungry and thirsty you solve just by eating the rations you guys the guys have in your packs. If you decide you don't want to deal with that immediately, you'll eventually get more stuff. I think after Hungry and Thirsty, I'm pretty sure the order it is on your condition is the order on your conditions list is the order you have to recover from them. Going backwards, I want to say. Hold on, let me double check something. Uh, Where is the grind? The grind. Do we have to eat before we can drink? No. So Hungry and Thirsty can be solved with either drinking or eating. Unless I specifically say otherwise, which isn't going to be that frequent. So yeah. You're going to be, here's the order that you will get them. First, you start, start with fresh. As soon as you get hungry and thirsty, you lose fresh. Then you'll get exhausted. And then you'll get angry, so the two emotional ones. Then you'll get sick. Then you'll get afraid, so the two physical ones. Uh, sorry, then you'll get injured, the two physical ones. And then lastly, you'll get afraid, so another emotional one. And then the last one after that is dead. So eventually, so one of the two ways you can die in this game is letting the grind kill you over turns and turns and turns. A lot of the reason you guys are going to decide to camp is to uh, recover some uh, of your conditions so that you don't die from them. So, Steve, your nature test is going to cost a turn. Whenever you guys make any th- decide you're going to do a test, you have to decide, is this worth it? Now, let's go ahead and just do this one, because I think it's a good idea, first of all. Well, not a good, not good enough idea to not do a test, but I think we should do it, because we, let's like actually roll something. I think um, it's a good idea, anyway. Quick question, where's the uh, Torchbearer Roblox, so I can look up some... It is in, oh, oh. if you go to the online group DM in our Discord, 
Uh, yeah, yeah. You're looking for towards the top of the towards the beginning of the messages. Look for Dungeoneer's Guide. There's also a quick rules guide that's also useful. I would open up both, in fact. Um, okay. Anyway, so, what's up? I have an instinct that's like for always identifying lost relics. Would that be applicable here, or since Steve's making the test, does it not really apply? Um. So, Steve's making the test. So your instinct doesn't apply for him. Um. This is more like we're identifying the text on a uh, like a building, basically. So okay. Let, well, let's say for relics, we'll keep if we if we if we, if we interpret that statement too widely, you're gonna literally just like identify right. everything mm -hmm. that looks yeah, even yeah. remotely confusing, right? So let's. There's gonna be lots of trust me. There will be lots of opportunities to use that instinct, but um, this is not one of them. With the cool. way instincts work is you guys know you have instincts. Anytime something com you come across something and you, it seems like your instinct applies, hey, be like, hey, Adam, there's this lock I want to pick, and my instinct is to always pick locks, and then I'll tell you what happens after that. You'll probably get a free test of some sorts. Um, that's Cat the Burglar's instinct, by the way. Um, but yeah, anyway, so let's go ahead and do this test, Steve. So you have a nature of... Five. Five. So you're starting with five dice. Now, because this is costing you turn, there's no reason for not for everyone else to not help. So let's go ahead and everyone take a really quick look at your skills and think about how could you help Steve interpret and remember what this language is, what these runes say on the Stormen. The you can help with a skill you think is relevant, a nature descriptor you think is relevant, or a trait you think is relevant. So my, or I have a wise you think is relevant. That one too. My bad. What's um, the uh, nature descriptor? Nature descriptors are at the top of your, uh, underneath your abilities, underneath your nature ability. There's three words oh, yeah, that describe your nature. Oh yeah, it's, um, I've got a lost ruins wise. Okay. That, uh, so now my that knowledge, you can, yeah. you can aid with that wise. Aiding is a little bit different from helping. Aiding is when you help with a wise instead. It doesn't count as help, but you can't do both help and help and aid. And the reason it's different is when you decide to help someone, if they would get a condition from failing the test, you will get a lesser condition. Okay. Um, but aiding insulates you from that effect. So aiding is like, there's no reason not to. Got it, okay. So how do you help with a wise? So I think I know, like, I'm particularly well-versed with Lost Ruin, so I may not know the language itself, but I might be able to, like, compare it to different languages, try and, like, help him figure out, like, the syntax and the grammar um, by, like, you know, doing, like, a language, like, evolutionary tree, seeing what it might descend from or what descended from it by comparing, like, similar languages. Sure. Okay. Does anyone else have any interest in a art boy? Do I mean, help. somebody want to really rub my temples, help. help me think better? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how it works. Um, <laughs> I think when, when I could use I'm copying them down. I'm trying to figure out what stuff. would be useful, and Off the top it's right. not easy to figure anything out. Yeah, I agree. It's not easy. Off the top of my head, I can think of something Ian probably has that would help. I'm looking at the other two of you. I could ask the gods. <laughs> Better if you guys have scholar, that might be helpful, or well, let me let me check. Lore my master. Okay, I would not be. I don't really realistically see a way that either Malia or Sanjay can help. Off of a quick skim of everything, yeah, you two probably don't have a very effective way. Off the top of my head, if you come up with one, please let me know. Off the top of my head, I don't see anything that's super that that could possibly help. So I don't see a so. But Ian, in your case, so a good example might be um, if I were in your shoes, uh, you have the theologian skill, I think. Yes, you do. So that is uh, information about the immortals, and you know that the crypts in this area are about or uh, usually have something to do with the immortals. So maybe you might help be able to help him recognize old. Like, as he's, like, you know, saying the words and trying to, like, talk it out, 
you might be like, oh, hey, that's a that's name that's an old name for an immortal, or oh, hey, that's a one of the domains of this immortal. That might be a way you could help with theologian. Yeah, I forgot what this was. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. Skill. So if you ever forget what a skill is, please ask, or you can look it up too, and I will totally help. Um, anyway, um, okay, cool. So Steve, five dice to start out with the nature skill. Neville's giving you a helping die, so that's six. And um, Ian's giving you a helping die, so that makes seven. Okay, the obstacle is four. So right now with seven dice, you'll have an average success success of three and a half successes. So right now it looks like you're gonna fail. So let's think about what we can do to help this out. Ready? Okay, so, number two, boys. A couple of things you can do to help this out. Oh, wow, this thing's already in my way. Uh, I can't read your sheet. Shit. Um, Look at the cat. Cat number two. Kitty. <laughs> oh, how are you all already rolling eight? Oh, because you're fresh. That gives you an extra die, so you're rolling eight. Okay, perfect. So, Steve. Oh, wait, you, can you see what I'm doing here? Yes, I can see what you're doing there. Oh, okay. So, Steve, you are fresh. That gives you an extra die and puts you up to eight dice that you're rolling. So, technically speaking, if averages play out, you will be successful. Now, let's think about what you could add to make this even more successful. The first thing you could add is you could add a trait. Your traits, it's a limited number of uses, but a good example here is you are firstborn. So, Ancient things are things that the firstborn know about. So you could use your firstborn trait and describe to me how your firstborn applies here and then get that plus one die. Another thing you could do is um, if you want five extra dice to roll, you could do something called channeling your nature. Um, oh, wait, no, never, never mind. Sorry, forget what I just said. You can't do that because you don't have persona points. Forget that. Um, okay. If you had any gears or supplies for this, you could use that. I can think of something, but I'm not going to say it. Um, the rest of them look good. So that, those are actually all really good. That options and list in the bottom are all really good. Uh, a good list of ways you can influence a role. So yeah, Steve, what are you thinking? Um, you can toss these eight dice, or maybe... So for the trait... Mm -hmm. If I were to use Firstborn, it would use one of my two beneficial uses. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? And those recharge when we go to camp phase? No. That's procession. Oh, those are procession. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. Then I think I'll probably want to use the Firstborn trait, too. Um... Let me read that real quick again. The rest of you, if you should probably still be thinking about the description and thinking about what you're going to do next, because I mean, Steve's Steve's thing will definitely give you a little bit of extra information to work with, but there's no reason not to necessarily like think about other things you could do in this situation. Um, okay. I am possessed of special insight that comes from my memories of the dawn of the world. So I'll use that special insight to uh, uh I just posted the description yeah sure, keep going up. To uh to try to figure out what all this stuff is because it seems like that's more insight into older things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, which this definitely seems to be. So yeah, cool. Yeah, alright. So Go ahead and check off that you're using your trait, and check off that you're using one of the uses afterwards. Uh, and now I think you should have nine dice that you're throwing, right? Self, uh, yes. Okay. Or wait. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. So, so this would count as one turn, by the way. This is going to count as one turn. And then after turn. four. After mm -hmm. four turns, we're going to deal with the grind. Okay. If you had, if you had light going, that your torches all last for a certain amount of turns. But right now, you don't need light. Uh, yeah, go Evil ahead. GM factor. Yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the book specifically defines situations where the GM decides to fuck you over. Um, I, I don't know how often <laughs> that'll happen. I'm not really the fuck over type of GM, but we'll see. Okay, uh, good. Anyway, go ahead and All right. Steve. Okay. Uh, hey. Four successes. Perfect. So... Because Steve matched the obstacle, he's successful. He will not experience a twist or a condition as a result of his role. If he had failed, 
he would still get to know what he wanted to know, but then something else would happen. Alright, um... So, you are interpreting the runes on the dolmen. These runes say that this crypt that you have found is the resting place of a person named Hathor Vash. I will type that out for you. Hathor Vash. Ash Brown? The runes don't really make it super <laughs> clear whether Hathor Vash was a chieftain or a hero or a priest or... But it's clearly someone of importance because she was entombed alive with her consorts, her slaves, and her bodyguards. As part of a ritual, she was attempting to become an immortal. The runes also describe a potent curse that will fall upon any who plunder the crypt or disturb Hathor Vash's meditations. Say that last part again. Yes, the runes describe bone curse. The runes describe a potent curse that will fall upon any who plunder the crypt or disturb Hathor Vash's meditations within the crypt. Okay. So basically the, the runes are implying that Hathor, La Hathor Vash is still in the crypt in some capacity. Okay. The other thing I was going to do too sure. What's before up? we go in um, with my hunter skill, can I I want to check the addresses of the the what it was called again? The dolmen. The dolmen. Dolmen, yeah. Check the entrance of the dolmen for any uh, footprints or uh, indication of animals, creatures entering in and out of the keep that uh, would uh, signify like a den that they're residing in or something like that. Sure, that's a good idea. Um, or sorry, that's not a good enough idea not to test. I should be very careful with that wording. That is something you could do. Um, it'll cost a turn and you'll have to make a test. Uh, let me think. So you want to... So typically speaking, sometimes the sometimes if I'm using a, a module, the module will tell me what to set as the... Um, what to set as obstacle. the obstacle. Other times, I have to. I can refer to the book itself, and it'll give me factors that I can use to build up the. Um, to build the. Uh, what the hell? Where's the skills reference? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong. So place. in this case, it depends on how descriptive we are on the action in order for it to become a test or not, or depending on how logical it is without any obstacles. Yeah, schools. it's a combination of describing it well and whether it, if it's like a very smart way of handling the pr a problem. Uh, that's right. like immediately apparent then it's good this is like kind of like an extra thing that you're doing um, and it's kind right. of like pretty straightforward there's no like extra like fancy thing that you're doing it's just like basic tracking which is why I'm going to say it's a test rather than um, just a good idea oh gotcha okay that makes sense so if you wanted to attempt this uh, this is Hunter uh, you are tracking a trail of common animals and not trapping. This would be an obstacle of two. Obstacle two. <clears throat> Do we think it's worth doing? Yeah, doing. Yeah. Worth, just... worth taking the the time to do it, or do we just want actually? To I was looking in? for larger creatures, not actually like common <clears throat> rabbits or anything. But I'm talking about like. Sure, um, but like you're thinking about like deer and like bears and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, probably because we don't know what. I was those actually are, those are still one... common animals. They don't affect the obstacle. The obstacle would go gotcha. up if you were looking for like mythical creatures. I was thinking maybe we should see if there have been like people nearby because we do know that bandits have been in the area. So there's a chance right. we might encounter bandits there, or maybe they're the ones who like caused the curse rather than it actually being the children. Um, if they like plunder so... the crypt. Does the children fair, though, the, the girl did come out with a bunch of treasure. Right. So, wait, so the girl came out, but then got, like, she taken dragged back. back she was in. climbing dragged back up back out of the dolmen, showing off her prizes and telling her friends about what she saw down there when she was suddenly mm -hmm. dragged back in. Got it, got it, got it. She had, like, tossed a couple of the treasure out, like, in front of her before she started her climb. Got it, okay. And none of the other kids went in, it was just her. They picked up the shit and just fucking bolted. Okay. They never went wow. In. Jorah was Good the friends. only one brave enough to go in. Um. In fact, actually, I should mention, um, 
let's say uh, Malia, Cat, you're looking, you're sort of, as everyone's pondering, uh, you know, sort of watching whether they're going to do this hunting test, you notice along this tunnel, there are these scratch marks on the earth, underneath the dolmen, as if someone had struggled mightily as they were dragged inside. You also mm -hmm. note there's like a broken t fingernail in the earth, torn at the root. Oof. Yeah, like, peeling up fingernails just, uh, um, I should also mention, actually, for you, Sanjay, because you mentioned tracks. Uh, other, you can still do this test to look for more information, but I will give you one piece of information. There's evidence. Look at, you look for tracks around the dolmen, and there's evidence that something or someone has emerged from the crypt and returned several <laughs> times in the past few days. Okay. Um, I don't think we need to do the test to look for more. Yeah, I don't uh, think so. I think we should say that for like uh because we can also do like a nature check or like um not a nature check but with country and you can do other checks to uh determine for like uh, nature rather. Mm -hmm. Um So I say that we just continue on, right? That I don't yeah, think I'm not be outside of the because we checked we had structurally sound, we know that. We know what the runes say. I would say, like, maybe we could set up a, like, a clear the area to, like, set up for a camp later down the road, but we do think, like, it might rain soon, so we'd probably want to set up a camp inside. Okay, hold on. Here's a perfect opportunity. Uh, Steve, uh, why don't you tell us what your instinct is? My instinct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My instinct is, uh, always triple check your surroundings when setting up camp. So, perfect example of if you were thinking that this might be a good place to camp, I would let you do a free test to search the area for a, for a prime safe spot to set up camp. Okay. So do you want to do that? It doesn't cost uh, you I don't think, it doesn't cost I don't you think we really need to test, but yeah, okay. set up camp here, do we? Yeah, we no, just yeah, got here. No, you just got here. Where's your insta? Oh, never mind. Yeah, you can always do it later if you guys ever retreat back to this area anyway. So, mm -hmm. But that, that is definitely something you should keep in mind. I have a yeah. question. What's up? Yeah. Um, I know earlier you mentioned that there was like signs of some supernatural or something. Mm -hmm. So would there be something where we could like try and communicate with spirits or anything like that? Is that a possibility? Yeah, that is definitely a possibility. Um... You, you could start with something as mundane as just shouting into the dolmen's entrance uh, to see if anything responds back to you. Um, Hathor Vash, you in there? That might... <laughs> yeah, that might... Not, that not might, sure. You might lose the element of surprise if there is one at all, but also you might get some sort of response that is useful. Um, aside from that, if you wanted to, in a supernatural method, communicate with spirits or immortals or anything, that's going to be what's called an arcanist test from you, Malia. So that's like what you use to cast spells and and interact with like just weird magical or spiritual things. Okay. I guess maybe I could try and like... Hmm... Yeah, I don't know if it's worth it. I was gonna say, like, we know there's some sort of undead because of the white, like, scabrous disease on the yew tree. We could try and, like, see if there are any, like, arcane residues that might, like, clue us into what type of undead it is. But I also feel like it's probably just, like, a ghost or something, right? Like, I don't know how relevant or it is for us to take the time to do that. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's at this DC. point we should probably just go in, because I feel like a lot of the questions we can answer out here yeah. will probably just get answered yeah. in the dungeon itself. Right. So yeah, let's go in. But if anyone else has any other ideas, feel free. Okay, it sounds like we're gonna go in. So, everyone has to drop on their stomachs for this part because it's tight squeeze. This narrow passage descends into the earth. Tight enough that you have to crawl on your belly to snake your way through. The air is dank and chill, redolent with the sand decay. You can see those white lesions on the U-roots that penetrate the ceiling above you. Um, I'm just going to skip ahead to the next room. Technically speaking, that passage has some information about it, but you guys already covered all of it. It was basically the details about the roots, so I'm just going to go on. All right. Once you... This... The... the the passage sort of goes down diagonally 
So you're crawling down, crawling down, and eventually you sort of fall out of the roof um, into this next area. And you find yourselves in sort of a long hallway of a properly built crypt. The walls of this long, narrow passage are honeycombed with small niches. Each of them is set with a skull yellowed with age, and those skulls have wax sticks, but look like candles uh, in them, but the candles are all missing their wicks. The whole hallway radiates this menace, and there's this low, nearly inaudible hum that tugs at your senses, it as if the hundreds there. of skulls that you can see are whispering to each other. You see an opening of a passageway in the north wall. Uh, so this is uh, sort of like, there's a passageway that's like a couple feet ahead of you, and then another one all the way at the far end. So there's two ways out of here, other than the way you came. Um, yeah, you see this passageway in the north wall, followed by four shadowy alcoves in the southern wall. Each an arch formed from human thigh bones with a skull as the keystone. Just at the edge of your light, which, by the way, you guys will now have to light um, some sort of light sources, beyond the alcoves, you can make out another passageway in the northern wall at the far end of the corridor. So there's a close, there's a close exit and a far exit. So now I'm gonna have to ask you guys what light you guys all need to light up torches or something. What's what are you lighting? Um, well, I don't have any torches. So let me spend you. I'll, I'll, I'll light have a, a torch. I'll light a torch too. Okay. So Neville, you can cover for one person, and Steve, you can cover for one person. That leaves one person who still needs light. Embrace the darkness. I can light a so torch. So Ian and Malia then will have to light up a torch. I can't. Things are that I have. It's under kit on your character sheet. Yep, oh. it's under kit on your character sheet. So you guys have anywhere where you have torches on your character sheet, there's technically four torches there. So Okay, I have see? a torch, I can light one. Okay, perfect. Uh so I think it's a little bit too many torches right now, so let's back up for a second. So um Neville, if you're lighting so Steve and Neville were the first people to mention lighting torches. So Steve, you can cover one other person. Who do you want to cover? Um hmm. Now, I want you guys to think about the That's order cool. you're walking in here. I'm walking in the front, I'm assuming, because I have the most uh, combat and So, home. someone should cover for Sanjay. Whoever's going to stand um, next, stand right there. I'll go up front with Sanjay, because I'm kind of like a sneaky, sneaky guy. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. So, sneaky L me. will carry a torch for Dante up in the front. Now, towards the back, uh, I, I, I assume that's where uh, Silas is going to be. Uh, Silas, yep, who do you want to cover mage. with your torch back, back here? Uh, do either of you two have candles? Um, no. Okay, I guess I'll cover... Ian, what are you? You're a priest. Yeah, we'll go oh, the magic boys together. I'll cover mind, Ian. Another thing you should keep in mind, that you'll have to hold the torch in one hand. Yep. So if you're already I've holding things in your hands, you need to move those to other places. Already got a torch in my hand. Um, Already in there too. <laughs> okay. So, sounds like it's just Malia who needs to find a way to light it, light up. So now, Malia, right now you're holding a grappling hook and a dagger. You could probably. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Where would we put one of these things? In order to carry a torch, you're going to have to either hand off your... You probably shouldn't hand off your dagger, but you're probably going to have to hand off that grappling hook to somebody else. Or can a grappling hook be worn like a rope? I don't think it can, but I'm going to... I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, what if you attach it to the rope and then... Where? Just let it drag behind us. Just let it drag behind you? Yeah. Um, no, 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 because don't grappling hooks usually have a slot for, like, ropers and line to put on it? How are you supposed to grapple without... Uh, hold on, let me double check. So we go to the gear at 148. I, th I think it's, like, held or packed two. Uh, grappling hooks oh, are right. carried one, belt one, or pack one. Oh, belt one, too. So you can put it on your belt, you can hold it in your hand, or you can pack it in two slots. So does anyone get rid of have... It. So you could either... Well, yeah, you could either... Um... Just ditch this here. Hope that it's here when you, when you still when you come back. Spoiler alert: there's a strong chance it will not. 
Um, yeah, or, I was going to say, that doesn't sound very yeah. wise. <laughs> or <laughs> if someone's got an empty packed uh, belt slot that they can fit uh, a grappling hook onto for her, you can pass it off to that person. Mine's all full. Um, Let me check mine, too. Um, kit, it's been kit, right? Yeah, it's been kit, yep. Uh, you'd probably be... You'd, probably don't want to pack it because it's got pack two instead of belt one so if anyone's got an empty uh belt slot that they can they can spare actually wait not. ian do you have a torch in your main hand or in your in your hand right now or are both of your hands full my hands are full okay ian doesn't really have any weapons he does he I has have a hand action and shield oh right he's got a shield um ian you should uh get rid of your shield <laughs> my shield I could get rid of Steve's rations no, don't do that <laughs> um, really it's only one day yeah you don't need to eat do we yeah, need a tinder yeah. box to light the torches or do we no a tinder box is specifically <laughs> for um where does it do where is it a tinder box allows your character to light a fire without making a test under normal conditions it also grants okay. plus one D to survival test to start a fire in bad conditions. So it's mainly that second part. You can still light a fire without a tinder box. Okay, then I think I might drop the tinder box. Does someone have a pocket space? I have a pocket space. I want to carry my toy oxen so I have the belt space. Uh, sure. I think I also have anything in my pockets? Uh, probably not. I have some berries in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, yeah, okay, that's a perfect thing. So why don't we do a quick trade here? Uh, Ian can give his pair of toy oxen to Malia, <laughs> who will put it in her pocket. Why do you have toy oxen? It's my spellcasting thing. <laughs> and in exchange, Malia will hand off her grappling hook to Ian so he can put it on his belt. Why don't, why, why don't we do that? So, Malia, go ahead and if you're in edit, go to uh, edit mode on your kit and type that in in your pocket. Yep, perfect. And Who's then typing go vigorously type in, like that? Uh, a pair of toy oxen. A pair of boy oxen? Yeah, like exactly. Yeah, that's what I thought. Too. Oh, my. Yeah. The moose boys. I don't even know what an ox is. Moose. They're like cows. They're, cows. They're bovines. Cows. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect, exactly. And now the grappling hook you're going to remove from your hands, because now Ian's got it, and you're going to put a torch there instead. When you're using torches, you'll still have like three taking up one pack and then one in your hand. Yep, exactly. That's annoying. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, space is for sure a massive premium in this game. Um, all right, cool. So now everyone has light. I'm going to uh, copy and paste the description I gave you guys about this room uh, in the chat so you can read it again. But go ahead, this is the first real room of the dungeon. So so first up, can we get back out? Because the entrance was like on the ceiling. Um, yeah, sorry. When I say on the ceiling, the ceiling is not very high at the, at the very beginning of the tunnel. You guys would have like, you can sort of drop down, like land on your back, and then right yourself, and then crawl a little bit more, and then you get up into this room. So you can get back onto your belly, crawl back into the tunnel, and then work your way back up. It's a bit, it's a, it's a tight squeeze, so if you have to do it at speed, it would be difficult enough to require a test. But if you don't have to do it at speed, you can do it without a test. Suspect oh. that you mentioned this. <laughs> Are we at the southern edge or the northern edge? You are at the... Western edge, I want to say. Oh, okay. So there, so we can go like left or right here. Uh, basically, there's two lefts you can take. They're both both the there's a in the north wall. So there's there's a close left you can take and a far left you can take at the end of the hallway. Mm -hmm. so like, like this, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then there's like some little rooms on the side where we are. That's where you are. That little like cross shape you made. Yep. Okay. 
me read the description of Passwind. No, oh, no. I understand. I see, I see, uh, I see. I should, I should mention that those skulls that are yellowed with age, it doesn't say this in the description, but they have, like, candlesticks in them that are missing their wicks. Yep, yep. And the candlesticks... Um, he's like the... T What's up? Is the top of them, like, hollowed out? Yeah, yeah, so it's, like, buried into okay. them. Uh, and mm -hmm. upon closer inspection of these candles, they're, like... Uh, they have, like, these weird black and purple streaks going through them. The candles do? The candles do. Even though they're missing a wick, they have these- it, the wax itself is blackened and purple in some sections. Can I smell it? Uh, yes, what? you can. Uh, it doesn't smell like anything, um, except- Not a scented candle, darn. The whole- the whole room smells musty and of death, so it's a little bit mm -hmm. hard to- And these skulls are yeah. attached to the wall? Yeah, yeah, the, these skulls are attached to the wall in multiple places, and, like, their skulls like, are fucking everywhere. Like... I was gonna say maybe we should light some for like light further down, but I, these seem cursed. Yeah. You said there's no wick, didn't you? Yeah, there's no wick. You couldn't light these if you wanted to. Uh, there's no wick, right? Like they'd ever been used or anything, it look or like, they're just like it's like a fixed. perfect cylinder. Other than the fact that it's like miscolored, it's a perfect cylinder. Anyone got a free pocket? Do we want to just like grab one of these? Why? I don't know. Could it be useful. No one's, no one's gonna pick up everything he encounters. It's Skyrim, yes. baby. You got yeah, pretty much. Place, you know? um, keep going. I'm listening, but I'm just gonna go with tea. Okay. Uh, I see the opening of the passage the northern wall, foreshadowing alcoves. So yeah, I this guess. Is, this is where you should be looking at your skills and figuring out how can I benefit the party right now. Earth. I guess I kind of want to step forward a bit and like raise my torch to try and see inside the. So it says with a skull as a keystone. What exactly is a keystone? Like um, like these um, these alcoves are sort of like the edges of the entrance of these alcoves are ringed by thigh bones. Mm -hmm. And then at the and so like at the top uh, center, there's the top a center, skull. There's a Okay, so I guess I kind of want to step forward a bit, raising my light to try and like see inside what one of these alcoves are. Sure. I want to keep my distance, but like just kind of get enough light to like see what's in there. Sure. Okay. Um, let me think for a second. Okay. Uh, you creep forward. Uh, slowly. And actually, you know what? If you're gonna do this, I'm probably gonna need a scout test nettle. To be okay. Scared. You're specifically uh, describing you're trying to be careful. I don't have scout. Does anyone else have scout? No, nope, hold have on, scout. hold on, back up. Can I not? I can't make anyone else do it? You can't make anyone else do it, you're still doing it. So here's okay. how this works. Ready? This is a concept called beginner's luck. The reason I make you got you can't pass this off to somebody else who's more experienced is because everyone in this game can do every check, even if they don't have a rating in it. This is called mm -hmm. beginner's luck. The way beginner's luck works you're going to roll the appropriate ability that's associated with that instead. In Scout's case, I believe it's will associated. So what you're mm -hmm. going to do is you're going to roll your will rating instead. We're going to okay. do, we're going to add the dice you get from help, uh, from wises, from supplies, and from some gear, and then we're going to divide that in half for the beginner's luck penalty. And then afterwards, okay. if you want, you can add the fresh nature bonus. Well, you're definitely going to add that. And then trait bonuses, and you can channel your nature and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, let's let's go ahead and do that. That's a good idea. Um, okay. So what's your will? Five. Five. Perfect. Okay. Now, uh, group, talk to Neville. Tell him how you could help him. What What is he trying to do again? He Neville? is like, take. He's holding his torch in front of him and sneaking closer to these alcoves so we can peek inside of them. Uh, I would like to use my wise of the folly of humanity to uh, <laughs> explain to Neville that he's uh, making a mistake. Okay, <laughs> different. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're trying um, to be careful as and also not step in traps. Can I look at... Or you're trying to be quiet, I guess. He's trying to be quiet and careful. Yeah, so like... How do you help somebody who's just walking forward? Well, I mean, the people holding torches could just move. I am one of the people holding well. torches. Yeah, I know, but the other people, so we can look uh, better. 
Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, actually, getting... this reminds me of another thing. Uh, so the way beginner's luck works, typically speaking, when someone's doing a test, you usually help them with a, the same skill. So in this case, Neville would be doing scout. So if you have scout, you could just help him like straight up, like, hey, I'm walking him through this because I'm better. Oh, okay. Um, if you don't have scout, but you still want to help him, you can do the same action with him. Like, all right, let me let me get in with you. I'm, I'm we're gonna creep together together. And basically, the way beginner's luck works is a bunch of idiots who don't know what they're doing work yes. together to try and piece together. Like you know how like when you work on a project and you don't really know what you're doing, and neither does anyone else, but you you figure it out a little bit, and you're like, all right, we kind of pool our little bits of knowledge and work something out. So anyone here who wants to help, you can help with scout if you have it, or will if you don't. So technically speaking, on a beginner's luck test, there's almost no situation where you shouldn't be able to help. Okay. Is it more beneficial to help with the skill versus just the will, or is it? It doesn't balance? make a difference. They both give okay. plus one dice. Got it. Then yeah, I'll use scout uh, to sort of help guide him up. All right. Any other scouts helping him out, or is everyone else just creeping um, along with him? I can do that too. Okay. So you've got. So I'm just gonna like roll for that, or? No, no, no you're not gonna roll. Neville's gonna be the only one rolling here, but you're just helping him out. So basically, what it looks like is like. Cat and L are like behind Silas and whoever else is going with him, and they're like, "You got this!" Like, just I'll, I'll hold your, his hand. Put your foot there. <laughs> put your foot there instead, like that. Like whispering to him. And the other people who, if you so Sanjay and Ian, if you want to help, you are basically when you help someone, you are putting your, themself yourself in the same danger that they are putting themselves in. So you may choose. Yeah, no thanks. Um, so if you decide not to help, you're not doing. You're just standing back, letting these guys take handle. Uh, Fucking you coward. Want to... Yeah. All right. So we. So what this looks like is Silas and Zin are both sort of creeping forward with Silas at the at the front. Uh, maybe maybe Zin, you've got a hand on his back, and you're just sort of like looking over your shoulder, looking over the over your back, peeking around for traps. Uh, Dante, you you're sort of sort of standing there with your arms crossed. Waiting to see how this all unfolds. Just and, looking at all these goons crawling forward. And Cat and Tell, you guys are like giving moral support from the back. You guys are like, you got this, you know? Uh, all right, Neville, so you've got help from three people. So to your five dice, you're adding three dice. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think and then that gets halved. I don't think anyone's helping you with wises, and I don't think you have any special supplies or gear for a scout test specifically. Uh, so just, yeah. to, just let's talk about the supplies and gear for a second. So basically the way scout every test works is there's specific stuff that you can use to uh, help uh, yourself with tests. Uh, with scout tests, for example, you can use like chalk dust to like mark things or like spot things that are hidden. Um, or spot traps and stuff. That's a, like a good example. You don't have anything like that, so we're gonna ignore that. Um, so that's basically everything. So how many dice do you have? Eight. Eight. So we have that to four. Now, so you're rolling four dice, and I should tell you what the ob is, because that would be a very polite thing for me to do. Um, so the ob of this is gonna be skill, 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 one sixty. Uh, we're doing scout, right? Mm -hmm. So you are trying to... Okay, gotcha. Uh, the ob isn't an ob. You're actually rolling against an opponent here who might notice you. Oh boy. And the opponent who might notice... When you roll against an opponent with a scout test, you typically roll against their nature. And the opponent that you're trying to roll against has a nature of three. So they're throwing three dice. Okay. But I can try and use like a trait to give myself yes. an extra so dice. Now you can add you're gonna add fresh, so you're automatically getting an extra die. So you should be a five okay. now. If you want to, right. you can beneficially use any of your traits to add an extra die. And lastly, oh that's basically it. Yeah, because my wise don't already apply here. Yeah. Um so thoughtful is like pondering all options and like courses. Mm -hmm. Would that count for like ca being cautious here, sure. or is yeah, that not? Awesome? It basically okay. means the same thing as being cautious here. If you want to use the beneficial. Sure, I'll toss that in too. Okay, cool. So um, mark off the the use of it, and then well, you will mm -hmm. after you're done rolling. Okay, how do I roll something then? So I think you click on the skill if you're in play. Oh, I see, I see. And then it should yeah. ask you what you're adding. 
Um, you're not rolling against an opt. It's a, it's a versus test. Um, when you roll, hold on, let me look at your character sheet. I want to see what it says when you do this. So, uh, I'm using trait. No, why did it stop working? Because it said so. Oh, wait, it should be this. I should be rolling the beginner's luck, that's right. So I should click scout. It's versus, I'm using... Okay, I can't watch for some reason, whatever. How many people, I have three people helping me? Uh, yes, you have three people helping you. Yeah. So... Oh, and I'm using a trait. So, I'm at five dice, right? Should be at six if you're using a trait. So I have scout five for my will, I'm fresh, which is six, trait three, help. Yeah, why isn't it at six? I think the extra ones also get halved. Because it's saying the beginner's luck total is halved. So like yeah, my... so I don't think it should have the bonus from the trait you... or the bonus of fresh. When you click on like helper aid, did you change the number next to it? Yeah, the helper aid's at three. Okay. So I have verses. I have my trait checked off, and I have my helper aid checked off, and saying rolling five against opponent's three dice. Okay, I don't know why it's doing that. It should be six, because we added up to eight, we got down to four. It should be... So don't, don't. Yeah, I think it's having my. Yeah, don't okay, worry about so... that. It's doing it wrong. Probably because the roll. T uh, the problem with a lot of Torchbearer resources is they still use like old rules. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead and just use it to be in chat. You're rolling. Uh, you'll roll. Uh... You could also just like click on. One of the other ones. I, I just increased my help aid to five, so it's six yeah. against three. Okay, sure. Okay, yeah, do that then. There you go. Go for it. And now we just hit roll? Yep. Okay, so you rolled three versus your opponent's two successes. They rolled two successes with three dice. Um, so that means you are good. So what hap ends up happening is you guys creep forward and you peek into these alcoves. Um, inside of these alcoves, you can see uh, the skeletons of what look to be human, humanoids, elves, humans, something, something tall. Um, they have on them, if you look close enough, uh, around their necks there are these uh, expensive looking silver torques. Uh, and they're sort of wearing like really rusted, junky armor and weapons. Mm -hmm. What do you say was around their neck? Uh, silver, silver torques. torques. What are torques? Like, uh, like necklaces. Like a fork, but with a T. Thank you. I think it's actually a QE at the end. It's T O R C. Oh, never mind. I'm thinking of a different torque. Yeah, it is a it is a type of necklace. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, it's the same thing. You are now basically standing uh, in front of all of these. Uh, you can. Uh, there are only. Of these, um, there's basically a skeleton in each alcove, and there's four alcoves, so there's four skeletons. Only two of them are wearing these torques. Uh, so if you okay. want, you could grab, you could grab the torques, you could leave them alone, whatever you want to do. So, I as a player know that these are probably animate since I rolled against an opponent. But do I as a character realize that as a result of my success, or do I still think they're just like regulars? Um, I don't even think you as a player know that you rolled against an opponent, but sure. Uh, you Dang can, it? Um, it could it could be true that they're animated. It could be true that they're not. Um, to be fair, I guess that's a very that would be a very reasonable thing for you to believe, regardless of whether you uh, for both your character and for you. So you could think like, oh, if I grab these torques, they might animate. That is totally a reasonable assumption for mm -hmm. your character. Cool. Um, also, since I succeeded on a check with my trait, do I like check off the the use, there's like the little beneficial use, and then to the right there's checks. Do I check off one of that since I no, succeeded, or is that not this? Okay. No, we should talk about checks though. The next time we do a test, we'll talk about checks. I forgot about that. All right. Um, that and actually, I that was actually something I should have done just now, but that's okay. We'll do it later. And do I check off the BL thing for Scout? Um. Oh yeah, you passed a test. So go ahead and mark. Oh, I I need to do that for. Yeah, uh... You need to do that too, Steve. Yep. Okay. Um, oh, wait, uh, that would be for nature, right? For nature, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Oh, yes, you rolled nature, I rolled scout. Okay, okay, okay. Um, cool. I think I'll, like, hold a hand out and, like, back up, um, 
do I like recognize like the iconography of like the torques or anything or the torques are plain silver are they just like no plain silver okay them. yep got it got it got it all right um i guess i'll like back up and like inform the squad sure, sure, there's a sure. uh, skeletons there. over there they've got torques around them part of me two of them have torques part of me wants to you know pick them up and add to our you know tax funds but there's always a worry with crypts like these that they might animate. What don't do we think of the risk? Don't forget what the uh, thingy said. The curse. About the yeah. curse. If you uh, take any treasure. Here's the thing. If I don't take any treasure, I'm going to, you know, not be able to afford rent Perhaps this month. Perhaps we should so... wait until we figure out what's going on in here That's fair. before we take anything. That's fair. We can always fair. grab stuff on our way out. All right. So should we? I don't know how much I want us. Well, I guess they didn't notice us then, or nothing happened when I got that close. Um, let's see. What else is in this room? All right. So yeah, that's another test down. That's another turn. So Neville spent a turn doing that. So anyone who's carrying a torch, it's got one turn left, and then you'll have to light a new torch. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's other. What else do you want to do at this room, or do you want to continue to another area? Torches only last for two turns. Torches last for two Should... turns and provide oh, light geez. for two people. I thought they were four turns. No, candles are four turns for one person. Let me double check that though, because we are new to the system. You lying to me. Torches are two turns for two people. Yep. Okay. I think I, I think I got confused because the four torches come in a pack. Yeah. Huh. So I thought so it was it's four turns. Eight turns of light for two people. Right. Yep. Next time we should get a lamp since we have five people, we should get lanterns and torches since that's three people and two people. So we aren't we're, we're currently yeah. on turn three of the grind. Remember, after turn four, we're gonna get uh, a condition. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. What do we want to do, folks? Um. Eat. Not yet. Not yet. I yeah, really, okay. yeah. the part of me that likes pressing any button I see really wants to turn off, like, light some of these candles. There's no wicks. 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 We can't Right. Light. Sorry, I keep forgetting there's no wicks. <laughs> Unless you part of me wants to hold my you. torch up to them and, like, see what happens when they melt a little bit, though. If they, like, release an aroma or something, you know? Well, uh, can I pick one up? Bath can I pick and Body Works here? Humming. Uh, yeah, Smelling sure. candles? You, you can pick one up. It's, it, it itself is not humming. It feels to you like a normal candle in your hand. With a skull attached to it. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming he's removing it from the skull. To no, no, I want uh, the skull too, because oh, the you, skull is humming. The skull is attached to the wall. That you can't no. just rest at. Pick up the wall. <laughs> you could do a uh, laborer test or a stonemason test to sort of pick away at the stone to then remove the the, the skull. I, I don't think that's worth it. <laughs> you never know. How is the skull attached to the wall? It's like, uh, kind of like if they if you would like, like dumped concrete. They like just stuck the skull in before it dried. Mm -hmm. Look at French crypt. Look at French, French crypts, and you'll know. I don't know what that okay. means, but yeah. Like, like French the, catacombs. Uh, like the catacombs. Are... Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Dude, I want to well, go to catacombs. I, I thought you said it's French crypts. Like, oh, I didn't know the crypts had expanded to France. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought too. But since I don't know that much, I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> you just accepted it. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it's like Sanjay obviously knows more about the gangs in France, France than boys. I do. <laughs> I don't know. If anyone. If I had to pick anyone in this group to know about gangs in France, I would pick Sanjay. Absolutely. Um, we should probably keep going in then, right? Okay. Yeah. Do we do we want to take the close exit or the far uh, one? Yeah, probably... The close one to... The, the close know. one, at least take a look down that hallway, see uh, mm -hmm. see what there is. Okay, so we're, ent we're entering right. into the fourth room. Fourth room? Or, sorry, third room. Second room, whatever. Third, third room, you technically, if you count the outside, it's the third this room, my one. bad. Yeah, okay. this okay, one. Gotcha, my bad. 
All right. Uh, the map obviously says four, so that's why I call it the fourth roof. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. okay. Anyway, all right, so you guys take the close left. All right. You enter this room. A wide... Oh, wait, hold on. Let me change the picture. No, my map. Goodbye, map. New map Aww. will be born. All right. Uh, I'm going to do... You, uh, yeah, okay, whatever. So, a wide, shallow font... Uh, sorry, a wide, shallow stone font, about waist high, dominates this chamber. Water trickles into it from a spout shaped like a horse head and spills over the edge onto a floor that's thick with slime. A dull black metallic ewer, which is like a vase, uh, rests on the lip of the font. There are some statues in this room. Some of them are whole, some of them are crumbled and broken, and they stand in recessed niches along the walls. Another large niche recess on your left in the western wall holds a large flat-bottomed copper tub that is intricately etched in a strange and somewhat disturbing manner. Finally, a small niche at the southern end of the eastern wall holds what appears to be a pitted and blackened brazier, similarly etched. Etched. A brazier is like a, uh, like a holds fire. Fireplace. Fireplace. Yes. That is the text form. Um, there is a certain level of like uh, pomp and ceremony to this room. The walls are just a little bit more well made, like marble rather than stone. Um, There's no other exits here. Oh, um, let me look at my map. I don't know. Yeah, uh, there know. is uh, on, to your right. If you took if you took a right turn, you would go into the next room. Okay, so it looks like we can buy. Or how long was the passageway? Do we think it would? Like, yeah, so Ian's leave? map is probably not accurate. We don't so need like, scales here. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, probably it was pretty long. It was like the room. Let's say the room to your left, when you like from from where you first entered into that hallway, was like ten feet to your left, and then the other one is like fifty feet down, or no, maybe like mm -hmm. thirty feet down, or I don't know, something like that. Okay. All the hallways are like pretty narrow. The rooms aren't that big. Like you said, is it just the floor of the font that's covered in slime, or the floor everywhere the floor here? Of the room is covered in slime. And I so, is it like overflowing from the font's basin, or is there not really a basin? The, the water is overflowing from the font. The okay. water drips or trickles from this horse head, and the font's mm -hmm. been full, so clearly just pours out over the edge. Of yeah, the yeah, yeah, okay. It's a slow drip, though, you know? But yeah, right. the, the floor is moldy and wet. Not to the point is that there... it doesn't cause you any mm -hmm. problems walking around, but it is a sub And also, it's like a green, thick slime. It's a little bit unnatural. Like the Nickelodeon slime? Slime typically green? Like algae? Uh, that would that be could be guess. one thing, but algae requires sunlight. Mmm, that is true. Wait, wait, so uh, not like the Nickelodeon slime. It's, right? it's mossy cobblestone. <laughs> is, um, is there anything... Yeah, I don't know, tell that to Minecraft. Yeah. It's green. Uh, it needs sunlight. Yeah, anything green's gonna need it. Um, is there is anything like in a, the font? Like a brown, if anything. Yeah. Probably just mold. Or like a yellowish color. Uh, what's that, what's that, what's the question now? Is there anything in the font? Yeah, water. But there's nothing like in the water. Like, oh, oh can we exactly. see through it or? Yeah, uh, the water is appears clear when you bring your light to it. Now, of course, the whole room is black. The font itself is black, so you, it, you can't quite see to the bottom. Uh, as far as you can tell, without physically removing the water or fishing around inside, don't see anything. Okay. Once a sec, press your hand. You do. Can I go over to the tub and see if there's anything no. in there? <laughs> yes, do you like you want to check out the tub? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. The tub looks like it's got intricate but mostly meaningless etchings on it. It's big enough for, like, it's a big tub. Like, two or three people could comfortably bathe in this thing. Uh, it doesn't currently Needs have any bath. water in it, but it has a hole at the bottom where water would drain. 
etching is not the same kind of runes that were on the No, the no, end. this is clearly decorative. It, it definitely is not runic script or it doesn't seem to hold any meaning. It's kind of just like meaningless etching that you might put on anything to make it look a little fancier. When we um when we looked at the runes from the outside, were we able to like narrow it down to like a civilization or like a race or like ethnicity or something? That's a good question. I don't know, do we? Where is it? So, um the runes don't narrow it down to a civilization, a race, or an immortal. The statues clearly depict people who could be immortals or ancient heroes or an ancient civilization. Mm hmm But we have no idea which. Okay. Um, if you would like to... Um, they look like immortals, basically, but not the ones you're <laughs> familiar with. Uh, Neville, if you are interested, yes. you may make mm -hmm. an uh, obstacle to theologian test. To try and determine what these statues are uh, upon would close this, detailed examination. Would these count as lost relics for my instinct? Uh, the statues? Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. So okay. why don't you make a free test? Alright. Um, this is also another beginner's luck one. So the way this uh, works is, uh, so sometimes instincts let you do something without a test. In this case, mm -hmm. you have to make a test because there's an obstacle associated with it and there's like right. information basically. Uh, if you mm -hmm. fail this, there will be no negative outcome. But you, cool. I just won't give you the piece of information without you re-attempting it, which will then cost a turn. And then Can people right. still help with it? Uh, you may only help with instincts if you, have, if you are also acting on instinct. Or okay. if you have an appropriate wise. Um, okay. So... I can only assist with a trait or a wise here, right? Um, do they look human, the statues? Yeah, some. One has like a horse head, so not oh, completely. Not, not really, then. <laughs> I mean, it's, like, I, it's like the body of a man, the head of a horse. So it's like... Okay. So like, would my elf wise be appropriate here, or no? Would your elf wise yeah, be appropriate horse wise? Or not? That's a good okay. Do horse wise? What was that? And if, does somebody have horse wise? Horse wise. Ian has mushroom wise. Yeah, are they are the statues covered in mushrooms? Does no, that help me identify who they are? <laughs> and lost ruins probably wouldn't apply because I'm looking at like civilization, right? Well, you're the one making, making the text, so you can. It's more about the immortals yeah. than it is about civilization. It is yeah, that's what I thought. If this mm -hmm. was about like civilizations, I would have asked for a lore master test, not theologian. Cool, cool, cool. Got it. All right. Um, so this is just. I don't have anything that's going to assist with this. This is just raw, independent. You said obstacle two. It's obstacle too, yep. Alright. Does this test not cost Ooh. time? Hey, it's all it doesn't, yeah, This doesn't cost a turn because he's acting on instincts. So instincts, uh, like I, they're very powerful tools for you guys to cheat the system a little bit. The two ways you cheat the system is, I say, oh, that's a good idea, and we do it. Or you say, I have an instinct for this, and we do it. Uh, this is another way, so once again, we're not going to, this is turn three, it's still turn three. Alright, so you've closely examined these statues. Um, so it, it was hard to tell immediately because their appearance is, and symbolism is so strange. Clearly these ancient people depicted these immortals very differently from the modern day did. But you can tell that these immortals depicted here are the lords of fate, the lords of life and death, the lords of silence, and the two-faced lord. Uh, these are very, very ancient immortals, like almost primal, uh, like age. Like they're, very few people really actively worship these guys because of how just fucking old they are. Like temples mm -hmm. to them are like ruins now, basically. Um, something I should mention to my Theurge uh, is that these statues are actually, uh, you're sort of looking at him, what, what's it called, after you, after he tells you what they are, you have a sudden real, realization, like, you had, you had had a strange feeling when you were looking at them, but now you suddenly realize, 
these are these statues themselves are actually relics for casting the invocation called Fury of the Lords of Life and Death. The Statue of the Lords of Life and Death specifically is a relic for the invocation Fury of the Lords of Life and Death. If you want to check out that invocation, go ahead and open up your uh, Dungeoneer's Guide and go look it up. Um, it has a size of pack 10. So unlike your toy Austin, it will not fit in your pocket. Uh, and you probably won't be able to walk away with it unless you really try and finagle something. But it is. A, you should keep in mind that it is an invo It is a relic for you to cast an invocation if you were in this room. That's cool. All right, I'm gonna need to put one of you guys in my pack so that I get. What to, uh, pack. what page? What page is that on? That it's invocation. 218. What does this do? It causes me right. undead uh, to flee. Why don't I bug a specific person? Malia, is there anything mm. in this room that feel feels like something you want to check out? Don't worry, don't worry too much about your skills, just something you're interested in. Um, well, one thing I have been wondering is where is the water coming from? Sure. And so mm -hmm. if yeah. I could investigate that further, that would be cool. Yeah, okay, sure. So the font is waist high and it's full of cold water and the water is trickling from this like horse's head in the center. Like this horse's head statue almost. And the water trickles from it at a pretty slow rate. Uh, you don't know whether the water itself is drinkable. You could find out in one of two ways. A, you could drink it and find out, see if you get sick. Or B, you can make me an obstacle one survivalist test to determine if the water is drinkable. Uh, other than that, when you peer closely at the, uh, where the water is trickling from, um, there's like a small little like hole at the top of the, like the center of this horse's nose basically where the water is trickling from and you can see like the edges of this hole have a little bit of that green slime that's all over the, the brown blackish slime that's all over the floor too i'm gonna guess it probably isn't drinkable yeah if this is the source of all the creepy slime yeah well can, can you like can we can you dip your finger and taste it and spit it out so you don't actually consume it but it's like does it taste okay? It might still be enough to cause an infection, give it, though. A, give it a smell. Give it a smell? You can give it a smell. Don't have some iodine powder? It doesn't smell strange. It feels cold to the touch as well. Mm -hmm. Can I use my water purity test kit? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I know... Do any of these lords have, like, horse imagery related to them because we've been seeing a bit of that there was one now. with a horse head yeah yeah, yeah he said one of them was a horse is, head uh, the horse head guy is the um, 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 um 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 which one is it he is the two-faced lord okay and then this head is face. he is sometimes depicted with a horse head and like a horse head and sometimes he's depicted as just a regular man and then this font also has a horse head that's like dripping water out of it mm -hmm. oh yeah what do we know about the lords, or the two-faced lord? That would be a theologian test, Neville, if you'd like to make one. It would have a ob of... Uh, <laughs> it would have an ob of, like, five. Yeah, okay, no. Mm. I don't think I can do it. it. I, yeah, I, it is literally impossible for me to succeed that. Well, okay, um, hold on. Let's back up for a second. Let's talk about why failing is fun. All right, ready? Oh, uh, that's true. So, first thing you should know about failure: you need to fail to advance your skills. When you look at a, mm -hmm. when you look at your skills, they have pass and fail bubbles you need to fill in. If you don't fail at least sometimes, you're never going to get better. Two, right. when you fail, you usually still get what you want, but additionally, you get either a condition or a twist. So you just have to be able to deal with that afterwards. You'll probably still get the information you're looking for. Uh, and finally, Got a little failing three, forward. and this is the most important detail. You can use traits in a negative manner against yourself. And when you do mm -hmm. so, you earn checks. It is extremely important that you guys earn some checks. Because if you camp and you have no checks, camping is useless. Oh, you. that's right. You must find opportunities to earn checks. Now, there's two... There's, you can earn one check when you use a trait against yourself in an independent test, 
or you can earn two checks when you use it against yourself in a uh, versus roll. So I should have mentioned this to you when you were doing that versus roll earlier, because versus rolls are really great opportunities to use checks against mm -hmm. yourself, and you had a bunch of extra dice. So one of the ways you do it is you give the opponent two extra dice. The other way you do it is if you tie with them, you, you break the tie in their favor. Either way, both of those give you two checks, and you can only use each trait against yourself once per uh, adventure phase, like between each camp. So mm -hmm. if you have a, anytime you come across a versus test, you should consider like, hey, I could, I could use a trait against myself and earn two checks instead of just the normal one. But anyway, right. this, is, this is a test where you just said, it's impossible for me to pass. Well, if it's impossible for you to, for you to pass, what's, what's uh, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with, uh, what's it called? Doing taking, it just to get the check. Minus, taking a minus dice just to earn the check. Yeah. yeah. Um, so four, four checks with beginner's luck, do I have to succeed to get the uh, thing, or does it not matter? Do I just have to make the check? Sorry, I don't understand. So, like, because for a theologian, I'm using beginner's luck. Do I have to succeed to get another notch for its like increase, or do, oh. do I just have to make the check, pass or fail? Uh, here's how beginner's luck works. If you're doing something that's beginner's luck, only mark passes. Sorry, uh, it, whether you pass or fail, just mark a pass bubble. Uh, beginner's okay. luck, you, you earn the skill that you're doing beginner's luck with when the number of times that you've tested with it equals mm -hmm. your maximum nature. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So, I mean, are we okay with trying to learn more about the this two-faced lore? Because it seems like they're pretty yeah. relevant here. Uh, uh, <laughs> no. Are they relevant? There's another well, we've, horse. We know they're, they're trying to become like... an immortal. Um, so Hathor one, Vash and is trying to become an immortal. Yeah. Hathor Vash is trying to become an immortal. And um, there are others here... But if the fury of the life and death was just to protect against undead, see, here's one thing I think is interesting. It seems like they probably, I don't know if the Hathor Vash and their attendants are the undead in here, but they also have a room to protect against undead. So part of me thinks they might not be the undead that's playing the dungeon. I'm not sure. They might be trying to protect yeah. themselves from their own curse. Um, also, um, so. That would explain why the Lords of Life and Death are here. We also saw a few others, but I wonder if they're, like, trying to join... Part of me wants to know if they're trying to, like, join the pantheon of the Two-Faced Lord. Um, because, like, the... But that's the thing. The Two-Faced Lord sounds singular, whereas most of these other ones are plural. Um, so I'm not entirely sure. Hold on, where's my list of these? I wrote it down. We have Lords of... Yeah, all of... So, Lords of Fate, Life and Death, Lords of Silence. Um, those are all lords, or plural, but Two-Faced Lords sounds singular. So I don't know... Like, that one seems to stand out here, and we've also seen multiple horse imageries, um, which makes think me think that... we've seen one. Two. The two? statue and this one. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, man. The font yes. both horses. And the font, well, I guess yes. if you count the statue, yeah. And, like, the font seems pretty central here, even though this seems like a place mm -hmm. to protect against undead, which would lead me to think it would be Lords of Life and Death. So instead, it's the Two-Faced Lord. So I think they might be something important. Oh, hold on. Um, There's actually one more thing that I should mention, and I'm going to pass this off to... Uh, or I'm going to mention this to our Deirge, or whoever's best at our... I assume he's the one who's best with Theologian here. He might um, be the only one with Theologian. Uh, this room clearly... Like, you look around, uh, Zin, and, like, there's the tub over there, there's a source of water, these statues. Mm -hmm. Clearly, this is, like, a bathroom of some sort. Like, you're supposed to yeah. bathe in the tub for the water from the... Um, the actual purpose of why you would do so, you may find with an OB3 theologian test. Is there a way... Without any rules... Part of me wonder if it's just like a purification room or something. Yeah, it sounds like a baptism site or something. Yeah, exactly. Okay, actually, mm -hmm. let's let's back up for a second. So you guys nailed it. That was a good idea. You are indeed correct. No test needed anymore. I'm going to give you some information. So the baptism was the word I was looking for. This is a place 
like as soon as as so, uh, cat as soon as you say the word baptism, it's sort of like uh, uh, Zin. You have this like aha moment, and then you describe to the group what you think this room is about. Uh, this room does seem to be a sort of baptismal area. Those who were who would approach the immortals, they would take a ritual bath to lave away the pollution of mortal life. They would use the ewer, the uh, ewer that's sitting on the edge of the font, to fill the tub with purified water from the font before bathing with the aid of ritual attendants. They would then stand near the brazier, where smoke, w which would be emitting smoke, while reciting purification prayers. And I, they're standing in the bathtub, I guess, pouring water over themselves. Yeah, they would get into the, they would fill the, mm -hmm. they would use the ewer fill the bathtub with water, get into the tub, clean themselves off, and then walk over to the brazier and let the smoke waft over them as they recited prayers. And then they would consider themselves baptized and ready to see the immortals. Okay, so my worry now is that there's an immortal at the heart, like, what if Hashtervash succeeded in their attempt to become an immortal? Mm -hmm. So we might need to, like, baptize ourselves to go talk to them, you know? Um, I don't think it's something we need to pull the trigger on yet, but it um, might be uh, something worth go attempting sometime. Check out the brazier. Like, is there something lightable inside of it, or is it all just like burnt coals and stuff? It is not burnt coals. There is unburnt incense inside the brazier. Lighting it would just require sticking your torch in real fast. Okay. Is there a. Can I, can I look up? Is it like a fireplace? Is there a chimney I can look up? Is there a place uh, for no. smoke to if go? No, if you started the brazier, uh, smoke would just fill this room. It's not very Which fast. Which is what we would want. Stuff. It wouldn't fill very fast. That's the point that would suffocate you guys. Mm -hmm. There would just be wisps of uh, incense. Oh, uh, Adam. Yeah, you had mentioned that uh, cartographer I could like help with mapping out dungeons and things like that. Yeah, so what that means basically is if you are in camp, you can make a mm -hmm. cartographer check test to draw a map of everything you've seen so far. Okay. And then once you have that map in hand, you can basically fast travel to all the rooms you've been to without having to. If there were tests previously to get from room to room, you would skip. You could like bypass room. that. Okay. So nothing I can do with that right now, right but now, right now, nothing. Yeah. Once we once we camp, I'll be able to do stuff. Snodster, I haven't heard from you in a while. What are you thinking? Um, there? Okay, he is there. <laughs> yeah, I'm here, don't worry. Um, I don't know. Let me read. So we got a couple ideas right now. We could we could do an ob one survivalist test to check if the water is potable or just drink it. We could do an ob five theologian test to learn more about the two faced god. We could do a. We could perform this p purification ritual if we wanted to. We could continue to the next room. We could start looting things because there are things that are not nailed down in this room. <laughs> I just say we move on, honestly. Because it's like. We have the torches and everything like that, right? But they're limited. Mm -hmm. Plus, we're going to yeah, set up yeah. camp. We have to... We're probably going to set up camp where we're going to really start experiencing the grind after this. Oh, wait. Right? Our That's torches are out now, aren't they? It's, it's no, turn no. four now, isn't it? No, no, turn but, four. Yeah, did, well. we do another, did we do another test? Or because I don't think so. No. One was Neville. for Neville's scout check, and then one was for the theologian, That's right? Right. Yes, we're on turn uh, four. Right. Theologian now. was free. It was a test. Oh, the theologian. Oh, was yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, that's right. It was an instinct. Yes, 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 yep. yes. Yeah, we're good. We're still on turn three. After this turn, your torches will go out, and you'll light new ones. Cool. So, do we? Do, should we just move on? Because yeah, I think so. I don't know. I don't know. If there's anything of. You think we should do the ritual? So well, yeah, yeah what if there's some crazy god thing in the next room that's going to eat us all? <laughs> they, they might find us more familiar and comforting if we smell like smoke for some reason. <laughs> they might think we're a nice smoked brisket. Yeah. Exactly. Um, do we have, like you said, they had to recite prayers for the baptism? Yeah, we don't have... You don't have the specific prayers. Probably anything will do. 
just okay. a generic, like, we worship the lords of whatever, you know? Yeah. Well, I, think it, I don't worship any. Probably, like, I don't think there's a, outside of, like, maybe taking a turn, I don't think it's a, I feel like it's yeah, probably I mean, I safer as well to do, do the baptism. Yeah. I am required to tell you whether things would take a turn or not. Um, yeah, would, would doing that take a turn? It, to accurately perform the entire process, requires an ob3 ritualist test, which does then require a turn. Would okay. everybody right. have to do that, or would it just no, no, be no, no, like no. One, one test person, for... One person makes the test, and everyone can then do the process that way. Okay. So it would be a single turn, a single test. I think it's worth doing then. Right. Yeah. It would also save us from having to come back here if we find out. Exactly. We yeah. Why is the I think remember what Adam said. Yeah. We we're not trying to go into every room, you know. Right. Exactly. Like we yeah. don't want so, to have so to backtrack. Since we're already here, we don't want to have to backtrack. Yeah. I think like spending one turn doing it now will save us potentially multiple turns having to yeah. like backtrack back that, later. That is the way you should think about backtracking. Uh, doing things early saves you turns down the line. Yeah. And also, you may not be in a condition, you could be being chased by something, You could, the whole place could be c coming down around your ears. Yeah, that is worthwhile thinking, for sure. Okay. Do so we want to take a vote? like we should vote on this. Yes, good idea. All right, who votes for doing the ritual? Me. Keeping, keeping in mind, you may then choose to not do the ritual if the group decides they're going to. So that's one vote from Neville. Me. One vote from Steve. Me. Mm. That's one vote from Leah. All right, sounds like we're doing this. Okay, is there anyone who would like to abstain from performing this purification ritual with the group? I uh, mean. Okay, sounds good. So once again, Dante puts down his weapon and watches as the rest of the group, I think. Sounds like they're all doing it. The last thing I'm going to ask is, who would like to perform this ritualist test? Well, it should be me. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'd, I'd say huge. probably, probably Zim. Seems apt. All right, so... Um, Alright, so Ian is performing a ritualist test to start to, he's going to be performing this ritual, basically bathing people and stuff like that. How do the rest of you want to help in any way, and if so, how? And Sanjay, even though you're not participating in the ritual itself, you may also help if you can think of a way to do so. Um, think, think, think simple here, guys. There's lots of fill, simple things. Fill the bathtub, light the incense. Like that. I know he needs like ritual attendants to bathe him, right? Can I just like help with that? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can so just that's bathe myself. Bathe people. Yeah, fill I'll the, light the brazier. Light the brazier, perfect. Malia, you want to fill the bathtub? Okay. All right, perfect. Uh, so I should tell you, Malia, since you're finally picking up, since someone's finally picking up the ewer. Um, the ewer, as you pick it up, you note that it is made of... Ba -ba -ba -ba, where is this? Bones. Ewer, ewer, ewer. Oh, yeah. Uh, it is... Uh, when you pick it up to start filling the bathtub, it's, you can see that it's made of highly tarnished silver. Um, it's got a size of pack 3, and it's worth 4D of treasure, if you decide to take it with you. Ooh. Oy. Pack 3, though. We don't need rations. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, so... Uh, Ian, you're getting plus three dice so far. If there's anything else you want to do as far as wises or traits to add to this, feel free. Uh, it is an obstacle of three. Wises don't work. I am touched by the gods. Uh, which sounds very applicable. Yeah, yeah. It means the, it means they listen when you, uh, when you call them. So that would be very applicable here if you'd like to use it. Um, what's the op for this? Three. Three. Out of curiosity, the the fury of the Lords and Life statue. I can't take it with me, but if I were just touching it, I could cast if it. If you were in this room, you could cast it. In this room. Interesting. That was one of the statues. The other statue is the horse guy. Um, there was a few of them. I think there's, there's four statues. There's like the Lords of Life it. and Death, Lords of Silence, the Two Faced Lord, another one off the top of my head that I'm forgetting. Oh. I'm looking at the picture thinking there's only two. Oh, the fate, life and death, silence, two face lord, yeah. Yeah, ignore the picture. It's just for just for setting it's just not for setting the scene, it's for setting the mood. Like, there's, there's not, not even a stairway in this room, right? No, there is not. <laughs> yeah. 
I thought it was pretty good, though. This could be the font. The yeah, bathtub's it, over here. That's what the I was thinking, too. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do it. Kind of fits, but... <laughs> um, touched by the gods. Well, I have to do prayers, so I suppose I will be specifically trying to contact... Talk to someone. Sure. Um, in doing this, I guess I'll try to talk to the two face god. Okay, sounds good. So you're going to add your trait, so that's going to give you another dice. So I think you're going to roll. For, it sounds like you're rolling for this. So go ahead and so you've got. What's your ritualist level? Three. Three. So you got three dice from aiding, so that puts you at six. You're fresh, so that puts you at seven. And lastly, you are using your trait, so that puts you at eight. I think I'm getting those all correct. I got free help. Where is that? I use a trait. That's obstacle three, right? Yep. Nice. Okay, perfect. Um, so. Holy sixes. Um, you guys begin. You guys strip off your clothes. Start to get into. The, you guys get into the tub. Wait, you guys um, are getting naked? What the? Yeah, we have to yeah, for the ritual. Yeah, yeah for a baptism, bath we have to. Do you take a bath with your clothes, Sanjay? <laughs> <laughs> right, this is a situation all over again. Never takes off his armor. I'm literally watching your people stripping and getting into a bath. Oh, Dante, Look, we're friends. You're, you're we're all friends here. Doing. So anyway, you guys trip oh. down, you guys bathe, and then you walk over to the smoke, and you sort of let that ambient smoke and heat dry you off uh, as... Um, as Zin is reciting prayers that she kind of knows what she's doing, like she, you know, the general idea of how a prayer goes. Oh, Zin's a girl. Uh, yeah. Did I say Gahi? My bad. Um, no, you said she. No, you said she. I, I didn't realize that Zin was a girl. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah, I didn't realize that. I, I didn't look I, at the picture. <laughs> you know, I really hate the name Zin only for the fact that there's a god in DCSS named that, and that's all I think of every time. <laughs> You know, it's hard to pick things that aren't in use already. Oh, believe me, and I'm fully aware. <laughs> uh, How no, many times have I accidentally named something after something in Skyrim? Eventually, the prince. This the is deep. Smoke, Shut up about your name. <laughs> watch as the smoke sort of coils around your limbs and around your bodies, and then eventually you can see your, like, parts of your skin, like lines in your skin begin glowing. Like basically, where your veins are, you can see glowing, this soft, um, sort of uh, calming, uh, strong light that briefly glows from your veins, and you can feel like power settling into your veins. Um, the Two-Faced Lord doesn't specifically say anything to you, but this definitely looks like a response to your prayers. Um, I will now tell you that you guys will, at some point in the future, get a bonus to uh, each of you will once get a bonus to a defend action you can add plus two successes to the next defend action you do uh, optionally if you choose to while you're in this dungeon yes. nice nice okay so that applies Wait, what does it do uh, every uh, everyone who took a bath they have plus two success to their next d defend action. You don't have to use them the next defend action. So defend is an action that you take in combat, by the way. So basically, during your next fight, you can b buff up your next um, Oops. Uh, your next uh, defensive move. Is there anywhere where we can mark that down on here? Or do we just have uh, to remember it? I'd say, I think you just have to remember it. Uh, someone can write it down in chat and we'll just try and remember that it happened. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so that was the third test, and I guess Dante was holding like a handful of torches because everyone else is like fucking you take it a bath or something. <laughs> uh, but all those torches just, go just out. Just laid it on the ground. All those torches go out, and everyone has to. Do you guys just want to light torches in the same way you've been doing? So that we don't yeah. have to adjust um, people's inventories? Yeah, that's fine by me. Alright, so everyone, everyone who had a light torch lit now, you're going from three to two in your pack, and the, you're going to keep the one in your hand. It is now turn four out of four. After this turn, you will become hungry. Uh, what do you want to do next? Um, the purification ritual feels like you did it right. Nice. Uh, I will get dressed. Yeah, sure. Everyone gets dressed and puts their armor back on. So I'm, do I'm only realizing this after the fact. It might have been worth investigating the slime before we bathed in it. Um, 
But I'm a little sure too late for that now. No, it was... When the water was going over, you didn't feel like it was dirty. Oh. I, I think that's just because the water's been, like, on the floor for a while. But it was... Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, it's coming it's through the still. font in the... Like, the... Yeah, but the, the slime itself isn't coming through the font. The water yeah, that was coming yeah. out of that was clean. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's good. Um... All right. I don't think there's anything else. How was your bath? This room. How was cold. <laughs> Refreshing. <laughs> cold. Yeah, it was probably cold as shit. Refreshing. I've got torches to warm up around. <laughs> <laughs> also, Adam, I think you said four earlier, but I believe each the pack of torches is um one like one pack is four torches, not three. Yeah. Yeah. It is four. Torches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. So okay. One, uh, so you guys are going from three to two in the pack now. Oh, I had one in my hand. I but, also yeah, had, I had one in my hand already. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Alright, let me adjust this. Yeah, torch in one hand, spear in the other. Um, I think we should be good to keep going. Okay. Uh, do you guys want yeah. to go through the exit that you haven't been through yet? Or do you want to backtrack and loop around? Uh, I'd say through the, the new exit, new way, right? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Time to draw a new map. You guys enter a new room. I don't like this room. The walls and ceilings of this narrow vaulted chamber are shaped entirely of bones. An aisle runs along the center of the chamber, flanked by two narrow sideboards about waist high, which bear a variety of amphorae, craters, and goblets. Amphorae are like fancy... It's places. time to look up what an amphorae like, is. Like I knew what all of those were. Craters mm -hmm. and goblets are basically... They're all containers. Uh, on the far side of each sideboard, running the length of the walls, is, it's like a wise raid shelf or maybe a couch, upon which many bones lie, as if their owners had died while reclining there. A series of nine strange symbols are etched into the floor running up to an elaborately carved marble sarcophagus that bears upon it the image of a stern and ma magisterial woman. A number of urns and jars sit on the floor around the sarcophagus. Here is that text version. Uh, okay. Does this seem connected to the hallway as I'm drawing it? <laughs> uh, no, there's another... Uh, Sort of across where you just came in from, there's another uh, exit. So, so it seems it. like this. Man, why couldn't is... they just describe all of these things as jugs or vases? <laughs> it's got to use all these <laughs> fancy words. So, she was into these are probably so what we saw outside were probably Hathor Vash's bodyguards, whereas these are probably her consorts, since she was like you know. Enjoying what with are you them. Enjoying by these? Yeah. Who, Sorry, who, the bones um, oh, in the, here. Oh, like the ones sitting on the shelf. Got yeah, it. and then the what the sarcophagus. I'm assuming is Hathor Vash, but I guess I could be wrong about that. Hmm. I didn't know Hathor Vash was Christian. I see that crucifix in the back of this picture. Jesus. That's fair. Jesus. Yeah, was of course, here. Jesus. <laughs> Um, okay. It's like, it's, I should have made Hathor Vash's name, like, something different. It's like an anagram of Jesus Christ. Maybe <laughs> at the end. Um, guys. Okay. Do the bones on the walls and ceilings look like they're human bones? Yeah, yeah, humanoid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Woman. We don't um, Wait, why? Uh, do we know how the rash is a female or male? Female. We, we, you know that a Adam had... was a female. Adam the used the pronoun was, The pronouns were female in the runes that you were read on the dolmen. Okay. I would like to remind you guys of two things now that we are this deep. The first thing I'd like to remind you of is to keep a make sure you have a good idea of you know that you're not running out of resources like food or light. You're doing pretty good on it so far, I think. Secondly, 
Keep in mind you are in a dungeon and to be aware of the typical dangers of dungeons. Mm-hmm. I scream. Don't. No, I'm kidding. Um <laughs> So I think my first instinct is to try and figure out, I shouldn't say instinct because that's an actual game term, um, <laughs> these symbols seem interesting, do they resemble the ones from outside? The like do they look like the same kind of script? They correspond to any known language, not even the one outside. Uh, interpreting okay. them would require a obstacle for lore master test. Um. So that's one thing. That's that's uh, one thing you could do, Neville. What about what mm -hmm. about uh? Let me. You guys should uh. I'll jump in on this. What do you got? Can I open the sideboards? Anything in them? The sideboards. Um. They are carrying. On top of them are uh like the jugs and stuff. Each jug is totally mm -hmm. empty. There's nothing in each of them as you methodically work your way through them. The sideboards don't seem to have anything in, in, in them or on them or anything like that. It seems pretty... That one... That, that, that sort of seems pretty normal. There's no apparent liquid in this room either. There's no apparent liquid in this room. That's true. Is... Um... All right, I feel like opening the sarcophagus is definitely a bad idea. Yeah, we should uh, not do that because also yeah. in that... Uh, thing that we read in the warning, the it said, said "Yeah, that, if you yeah, disturb her remains, yeah. you'll bring upon the curse." Um, oh, open it. Oh, open it, Sanjay. No, restrain him. I do have the strength. Here's, here, here's yeah. a suggestion, though. Instead of open, instead of just straight up opening it, um, you guys are correct that you know that there is a curse. Whoever knows what other kinds of dangers there are, uh, other than the curse itself. Um, what ki what kinds of if you were if you decided you had to open this sarcophagus, you should think about what would you do to insulate yourself from danger before you do so. Hide. That would be shield. something. <laughs> Is there any writing on the or uh, carving writing on the sarcophagus? Um, the same sorts of symbols that described Hathor Vash are on this sarcophagus. So um, it's a, it is a fair guess that Hathor Vash is beneath here. Uh, the the words used here are very like rad, like really really playing it up a lot. <clears throat> oh, I should mention some of the urns and jars that you look at, Zin, they're full of sand. The ones around her. The urns and jars that are around the sarcophagus, just full of sand. Not like ash or anything. Nope. Not like remains. It's just legit sand. Legit sand from a beach. Yep. Sand. Okay. From a beach. What the hell? Not like literally from a beach, but you get the idea. <laughs> this isn't a beach. This is a tomb. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there's something in them. Then, like you might have to like sand inside. Can I pour so... the sand from one urn to another urn to see if there's anything in the original urn? Sure, you do so, sort of letting the sand sift through carefully. Nothing comes out, nothing's in there, and just, it was just full of sand. It's just, it's just sand, guys. Is it weighing something down? That is an excellent question. <laughs> so, uh, you check to see if it's wet. So, as you guys pull away these urns, uh, one of the sandy urns is weighing down. As you pull it up, the tile underneath of it just sort of slightly shifts upwards, seemingly Oops, weighing down this tile. Uh, Anything in the room change when the trail. tile moves? Nothing immediately appears like it has happened. Wait, put put the urn back down. Sure. Uh, that might that might be like a safeguard that they have for seeing if the remains are disturbed. Putting the, putting, the, sorry, putting the urn back down just pushes the tile back into place. Once again, though, nothing happens. Yeah, I wonder if, like, if it's lifted, there's, like, a slow mechanism that'll, like, I don't know, release a giant That's rolling ball. Alarm. Or... Yeah, oh, I thought, exactly. I thought you meant, like, it, it would, like, people would come up and check on it and see, like, oh, oh no, 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 no. 
Like it might be like a pr like I, I mean it looks like a pressure it's plate. It's like some kind. tape on like the inside of your door, so you could tell someone's. Like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's nine. So, people do there. that. Yeah. Uh, I don't when? think people do that in real life. They do it in anime sometimes. <laughs> I remember. Uh, uh, paranoid. Dude, these are all really good in uh, guesses, but uh, I should mention um, to Cat, who is an experienced burglar, Lamau. Um, it seemed more like it was just a false panel that's hiding something beneath of it. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, so not a pressure plate. Not with a pressure yeah. plate, yeah. It's like, more like a, like a loose floorboard. A loose floorboard, exactly. Oh, so then I have to check what it, what it is. Uh, I mean, just you don't have to, it. but yeah. You could. No, but I have to. Okay. Just got it. <laughs> so, you pry up, you move the urn and pry up this, uh, tile and what's underneath here is a series of uh like chains they run sort of from the wall behind the sarcophagus to the to a wall that's like to the right of the sarcophagus basically so like if you're looking at ian's map like basically they run to like this wall just next to the exit that you haven't gone through yet um if you give these like an experimental tug, it feels like on the far end towards the towards the far wall, like there's a like a mechanism a mechanism on the other side that if you yanked hard enough, you could activate this mechanism. But whether so, that mechanism is a good hmm. thing or a bad thing, you have no idea with without looking at these chains. If you wanted to uh disarm this mechanism in a manner so that you could pull the chains and nothing would happen you could do so and that would be an ob3 dungeoneer test from you oh i think that might the be things on the worth. floor first i do i agree with that but i think so all right i w i think initially i thought these were pressure plates for alarms but now I think these chains are the alarm, and if we open the sarcophagus, it'll yank them and then trigger like the curse or whatever. Um, you know, so like uh, so do the uh, chains lead to the sarcophagus? Or they doing the ch they don't lead the sarcophagus at all. This seems more like a way to close the room. Maybe there were. I think uh, is there a sideboard on the other side with equivalent chains to close the left door? So, so you guys give me a description of the trains more... again. The chains run sort of like a right angle. They run from the like uh, north wall to the east wall. Sort of, they uh, you can sort of see the way they curve. Like if you pull on it on the left, it feels like it's the tensions co coming from the north. If you pull on it from the right, it feels like the tensions coming from the east. And when you pull it on the left, like towards the north wall, not the, the closer north wall, nothing happens. On the right, you can feel the tug of like a mechanism that's like about to engage and if you feel like if you yanked it really hard it would engage whatever this mechanism is what that mechanism is immediately doesn't seem obvious a dungeoneer chest would disarm this whatever it is if it's a trap it would disarm it if it's a uh, uh like a bench and, and the chain's so going into the wall itself correct it's underneath the floor it feels it's going in the direction of the wall whether it's actually going inside the wall or whether there's something else underneath the floor that it's going to is unclear a quick search of the can other I do this? Can I... doesn't find any other false panels, though. Uh, if you wanted to do a much more detailed look, uh, Sanjay, I would ask from you a scout test, and it would have an ob of three. So the chains are running underneath, right, you said? Mm-hmm. And you said the one that was showing the mechanism, is that towards the sarcophagus or away from it? Uh, away from it. So it's away from it? Um, is it towards the door? Uh, sort of, yeah. It's towards the wall that's next to the door. There's not, there's no door there, it's just an opening, but yeah. Is it a secret there's tunnel? No Does it open a secret tunnel? It Could it open a could. secret tunnel? It, it possibly might. Possibly could. To Does it look like there... The of a secret tunnel or any other secret things is a scout test. Okay. So I'll Sanjay... Before or... we even do the test, can I do this? Can I yeah. try doing this instead? Can I... What's up? You know what you say? But I was gonna say before we start like fucking around with the mechanisms. Do we want to try and identify like the symbols since that might yeah, give us? Yeah, I'd say so. What symbols are we talking about? Yeah. 
the, the symbols, symbols on the floor. floor. Ah, okay, yeah. Um, sure. You said um, that was a lore master test. So, Steve or Neville, either of you could give me an ob for lore master test to identify these uh, symbols. That's another thing you could do. Yep. I'd love to do that. Go for it. Keep in mind, by the way, this is the last test before you guys lose your fresh mm. bonus. So do you want to mm -hmm. give Neville the fresh bonus for his lore master test, or Sanjay or Malia the fresh bonus for looking for... Probably Neville. Let's give Neville the lore master, because it's probably more useful in the context of what's going on in this room. How useful do you think identifying the symbols is? They're probably just part of a ritual oh, to yeah, supposedly yeah. become an immortal. Yeah, but I think knowing that might be helpful for like dealing with whatever's okay. further in the curse i don't know hold on back up i have to give it to you for free when you just figure it out like that uh all right um you're sort of looking at them zin and you think uh some of it seems familiar a lot of is a lot of things you remember from old texts that you might have looked at or things you might have heard from other uh theurges um these symbols you rec remember, they recommend they represent what's called the nine grades of illumination, uh, which are sort of steps on the path to becoming an immortal. Um, you you almost realize this like a flash of knowledge that feels almost otherworldly, in fact. But uh, yeah, that's exactly what these these symbols depict the methodology to become an immortal. All right, let's follow them and all become immortals. Let's go. Yeah, nine <laughs> easy steps to become an immortal. These are not something you could pull off on your own, and it would require a lot more research to actually figure out the process. Right, right. You mean we're not going to become immortals in the first session? No. We want, to, we want to win the game. Also, you guys think just by looking at it, they'd probably fry your brains. In really bad it, at the nice. I like little light brain. that you are that's worth it um in that case do we want to do one of the checks or trying to figure out what those chains do I think yeah maybe the scout to try and like figure out what the okay. chains effect is probably smart so I asked yeah. either Malia or Sanjay to give me this test you guys can decide between the two of you who wants to if someone has a better scout they can do it if neither of you have a good scout one of you can try the beginner's I level test I do not have scout do you have scout Malia? yes okay all right then you go ahead all right Malia okay. what's your scout two two okay so right now you've got two dice and your ob is three so as, of it, as it is right now, it is impossible to pass. You're going to need some help, or use some traits, or use some lizes. So, uh, the rest of you. Sanjay, you want you were thinking of doing it, so how do you think of a way you could help with the skills that you have? Or the nature uh, that no, you have? No, absolutely not. <laughs> Jesus. No. Okay. I'm a fighter, not a thinker. Um, I'm a fighter. If I have... I will to, uh... <laughs> If I have lost ruins wise, would that help me like figure out like am I familiar with like mechanisms they use to like trap stuff to maybe like guide us guide her as to like what it might be? Mechanism isn't like unique to lost ruins. It's more like okay. a simple like aspect of dungeons in general. So I'm gonna say no. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um would I be able to use Could I oh god. Uh would I be able to use Scout to like try to Listen for the the sound oh, of the chains over bad. by the wall. Did I tell Malia that manipulating these chains is a scout test? It's a dungeoneering test. Oh, oh. So which well, one which of you has better dungeoneering? I don't have any. Wait, I thought she was trying to like find out oh, if they need to bad. like. You guys are, oh, sorry. Manipulating the chains is an ob three dungeoneering test. Looking around for more things is an ob three scout test. Which one are you other guys doing? Looking around for more things. Yeah, okay, one. we're back to the scout then. Okay. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Um, recommend, the well, book recommends... Um, actually, I don't think any of the recommendations are very good here, so I'm not going to say them. <laughs> Those are shit recommendations. What you, what Wait, I don't understand for? what the difference is between these two things. Are we disabling so, the mechanism? A dungeon your test would things? disable the chain mechanism from right. whatever it's attached to in the wall. A scout test would identify what the fuck that mechanism oh, is. Oh, okay. So you said my lost runes buys wouldn't apply for what I said earlier? Would a dungeoneer skill help? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So then I'll do that. Because if, if this is a hazard, then you could identify that. So that, that would be mm -hmm. a way to help. Okay, cool. So Neville's tossing you a die. So that's three dice so far. Anyone else got an, got an idea here? Did right you now with get me here now? What's up? Okay, so, so what, what did, what did you, you get mine? What's yours? Sorry. Uh, I said that I wanted to try with um, Scout to try to listen for like the sound of the chains over by the wall where they connect. Okay, perfect. Okay, that's another die. Um, let me think here. I could... Mm. Well, we think there, there, there are think... ways that you could help Sanjay with Fighter. Think about it for a second. Ready yourself uh, for something to attack us. Oh, I don't know. Does, does my that brain's not working today, to be honest. That, 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 that is a very good idea. Maybe if someone's got a shield that can pass Sanjay really fast, he can brace himself against the wall. Take a hit for the team if, a ta if, a, if, a, if the trap gets uh, flung, you know? Or uh, activated, if, if, it was, if it's a trap. I mean, yeah. But once again, do you yeah. want to put yourself in the dan in that level of danger? Totally up to you. I mean, I'm not doing anything else, so why not? Okay, cool. So we're getting another <laughs> die from Sandre. So, so far, Malia, I think you have five dice. Three from Aid, two from Scout. What's the odd? Two? Three? Three. So, it doesn't sound like anyone else can help so far, Malia. So, uh, if you have a trait you feel like you want to activate, you can do that. Uh, other than that, I think you're tossing this. It doesn't really look like you have a trait that's useful in I any way. I don't think my traits will help. Okay. Um, there's also, you can use them against yourself if you want. Uh, really? You could give yourself minus one dice if you think you got it in the bag and you want to earn a check. But if not, go ahead and roll five dice. Or if she wanted, she could roll nature oh. instead of her scout, right? If it's higher. Um, if her nature is higher, she could roll her nature, too, yeah. But she's taxing it if it has nothing to do with her nature, which, let's see what her nature is. Uh, okay. Are. Uh, they are sneaking, riddling, and merrymaking, so nothing about disarming or fiddling or anything like that. No. Okay, yeah, looks like this is good so far. So you're doing an independent test. You are, you can check off where it says help or aid. And then when you check it off, oh. it should ask you for a number. Yep, see where it says one? You can change that to three. Okay. And then where it says against obstacle number, you can change that to three as well. Okay. Um, the obstacle was actually three. That's okay. Uh, two Did successes. I do it wrong? No, you're fine. You're fine. It, you rolled two successes. Uh, does that? Yeah, scout five. Perfect. Um, you rolled two successes against an obstacle of three. Here's what happens. Um, first off, so this is the first time we actually fail a test. So for your scout, where it says P and F next to it, you're going to check off an F instead of a P because you failed instead of passing, which is totally fine. Um, all right, let's see. And necessary, right? Like we have to yeah, fail right. stuff in order to, to level sometimes. it up. If you don't, if okay. you never fail, you'll never get better. Um, all right, so um, you you look around carefully for some traps uh, or secret doors or something, and your initial guess about the secret door feels right because as you you you, you think if there's a secret door behind here, it's hollow behind you. So then you knock, and initially the knock doesn't give you anything, so you knock a little bit harder. And you can hear there's a hollowness behind here. Um, you sort of follow that hollowness to, uh, what's it called? To another um, false panel that's next to the door on the wall instead. And you push that out of the way, and you can very clearly see this mechanism attached to the wall, but not to the other chains that you found earlier. So those other chains are about something else. They're not about the secret door. And you can and you pull these this chain. Well, if you don't want to pull the chain, you don't have to. But you pull. If not, you pull this chain, and it reveals a secret passageway to a different room. So now there are two exits from this building. Sorry, from this room going in that direction. Um, Wait. Sorry, I miss. I hate uh, when that happens on maps. There's now? the chains did lead to this, or they didn't. The chains on the floor. Do not lead to the mechanism that opens this door. She finds a okay. separate set of chains that opens this door. 
We got it. Gotcha. Okay. Those chains on the floor are something else. Got it, got it, got it. With these chains also in the floor on like the other they're side on, or they're just on, like they're on the wall next to the They're in a okay. panel on the wall, yeah. yeah uh -huh. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. See see why describe to live is so important? Because you describe you guys earlier described looking around the floor for more uh false bo false you know, like uh tiles. Idols. This, one's, uh, this one's this one's on the uh wall, which is why the scout test found it. But anyway, um you've opened another passageway, but as you're pulling it, initially pulling it is like a silent, quiet thing, but then suddenly, like, the the chains, like, whatever mechanism is slowly opening this passageway, like, it goes, it, like, goes over some sort of, like, critical, like, level, and then flings open with a loud bang, and that bang echoes through the entire crypt. It's nice. like the loudest thing that's happened so far, because you guys have been, been you guys have been mostly quiet up until now. Uh, oh, I wasn't wasn't us. Should we get inside the secret tunnel then? Before I do think that, just in case something before comes. Before we do that, I need uh, everyone should... to check off the fresh condition and check on the hungry and thirsty condition. I'm hungry. I'm if you hungry. just click hungry and thirsty, it'll automatically get rid of fresh. Yep, that too. And if you would like to, you may now immediately remove the hungry and thirsty condition by drinking from your water or eating one of your rations. But you would be taking it. It doesn't cost a turn. It just takes a minute to do so. So if you feel like you're in danger, do something else first and worry about that later. But if you don't feel like okay. you're in danger, go ahead and drink and eat and remove Yeah, I the think hunger. we might be in danger here. I no, think so. Whenever a loud noise occurs, you should get away from like the source of the noise because otherwise they know your exact position. So I think yeah, Steve's idea of going into the tunnel is probably smart. Yeah. Secret tunnel. Do so you guys want to go into the secret tunnel? <laughs> yep. Sure. I, I think so. Okay. Yeah. You guys head into the secret tunnel, and as you walk into the secret tunnel at the very start of the tunnel, you feel pressure plates descend underneath of you. Oh boy. Well, Fuck. The chains that you revealed earlier, you hear them pull really hard, ratchet, and then suddenly above you, these vents open up. These like stone vents drop, and gas fills the uh, hallway. So like spritz. How high up are they? Like perfume. It's around your face level. Can I use a. Hmm, that's a year. Um, and their vents. How do they open up? Is it like they, a like, uh, drop over the chart? chains? Pull. And the ch the chain is so. W w which way is the tension? The chain's going like away from us or towards us? Away from you. When those release, okay. So I can I grab the chain and try to pull it back up so that they cover up. The chains are in a hole in the floor, like ten to twelve feet from you. Um, how is the floor made out of like brick, it's a, concrete? It's like, a, like, the floor is made of marble. When you step, you step on like a marble like. Uh, pressure. Is it divide? Is it solid marble, or is there divisions in it? The, yeah, it's tiled marble. All right. Is this just um, like a room? Like, are there any exits? Um, I should describe that. Yes. Um, before we, before I tell you how this trap works, um, it is a hallway. It sort of continues. There's a big set of uh, double door, wooden doors on your left, and then there's going forward. There's a big hallway that just keeps going down into darkness um but really quickly let's resolve this <laughs> this trap Where is how high are the ceilings here only a couple feet higher than your head okay um all right so let's see where is it okay i need everyone well, to give gonna... me an ob what's up i was gonna ask so first before so the way that I'm understanding this trap, the chains let let the, the vents open, and the chains are hidden right now from the marble underneath us, correct? The only way you could access those chains is that false panel you found that's like 12 feet behind you. There's oh, that no was the way. one that was in the ground. Or, okay. So you're saying uh, there's no way to break the marble underneath us in any feasible way? Uh, not in any speedy fashion with a, a, a gas being sprayed in your face. Hmm. So it, this isn't to be all. Hold on, let's let's back up for a second. Anyone who's in the hall, which is all of you, I think, uh, is going to give me an ob four health test. Uh, this is like not going to advance the grind at all, 
It's not going to cost you a turn. It's just simply a test. Uh, you guys cannot help each other because you are all making this test. Uh, however, you can still employ traits. Uh, you can still use wises. Uh, and I think that's it. It's a wise. If you had, no. if you had like special gear, which I don't think there's any special gear you could possibly have, but um, go ahead. Uh, once you once you've decided what you're adding to this, if you're adding any, tr if you have any relevant traits, um, then what's the obstacle? Give me a, a, an ob or health test. Eight to do a heart of battle would, would that be anything? Uh, what does heart of battle do again? I don't even heart know. of battle is the idea that you you have you have the quality of that you always face battle bravely. This I don't think it really applies. If you wanted to use it negatively, yeah. you could be like, since I'm you could you could I I could think of a way you could twist it negatively if you want to uh, roll this like a, use a trait against yourself to get a check. Yeah, I was thinking like. Since my thoughtful means I'm like kind of like slow to make a decision, kind of ponder, I might like take too long to like try and like move or get out and end up taking in like more of the gas than I would if I acted sure. quickly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna give yourself minus one dice for this, and you're gonna check off that you just gained a, a single check. What time is it? Uh, oh, in the game. In the game. In in game. Uh, maybe like five, six p.m. Yeah. Okay. Um, I could do... Just need that for my early oh, riser. Yeah, you go to bed I, 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 I need to know when I start getting getting sleepy. Getting sleepy. <laughs> I would, if you want to twist it towards getting sleepy now, I, I mean, people get sleepy, you know, quite a bit before they go to bed. That's true. Okay. I might actually do that then. Okay, so you're, you're, you're twisting it like, oh, like, it's starting to go to those hours, and you're feeling kind of sleepy, so you don't react as fast. Yeah. Okay, cool, so you're going to take minus 1D and get a check. Okay, so that's a fail from Neville. Good job, Neville. I couldn't have succeeded anyways, I only have health 3. Fail from Dante, um, the destroyer. Is there a, <laughs> oh, is there a button to do an... You're gonna, uh, oh, uh, other through. modifiers, I guess, right? No. For what? If you're using positive. a trait against you, you can change... You click the trait and then you change the thing next to it to against self. Does that make sense? What? <laughs> Check, check off. Excuse me? Check off, check using, off trait. using trait. And so oh, shows oh, up oh. next to it. Against self, Change there we that. go. Um, because I'm jaded, can I claim, can I say that um, I know the trap is well designed? Or I believe the trap is well designed, thus there's not really a chance of me sure. holding yeah, my breath long enough anyway. Sure, checks now. They as well, I can't pass this Yeah, 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 it's a good idea. <laughs> Alright. God, Sanji got one success right, with a Ilya, six dice? Ilya, Jesus. Are you gonna use a trait against yourself like everyone else is, or do you wanna just try and. What's the benefit of doing this? What's the, you what's earn the checks, benefit? and you need checks to recover in the camping phase or do anything else during the camping phase. It is very important you earn some checks. If you want oh, to. Oh, dang, I should, have used, I should have used one that I didn't realize that. Do you, you still can, I don't mind. It's, you're still learning. Do you wanna have used a check? Yeah, I would just get done, uh, maybe the loner trait while I, uh, kind of brace it alone in the front since I'm already in front of the party. Okay, sure. That um, makes I'll... sense for me. Yeah, we're good. So you have a, you, go ahead and check off that you earned one check. So everyone, next to the trait... Oh, how do I do that? Next to the trait that you oh. use, this little check bubble, you're gonna check off one of the bubbles. Dante tries oh, to breathe in all the gas himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so alone. Fresh gas. <laughs> Adam, you said we can only earn one check per trait, or earn, two? You can only use a trait against yourself once per session. So now that you've used whatever trait Thoughtful level, you cannot earn mm -hmm. more checks from Thoughtful for the rest of the session. Okay, because like, there's not, two not bubbles for it under yeah, the traits. Yeah, because if you use it against yourself in a versus roll, you get two checks. Oh, two. that's right, that's right. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so, and it's not once per session, it's once per adventure phase. So if you camp, it resets that use. Um, Got it. But anyway, uh, Malia. You're the only one I'm either waiting for a roll from, so what do you want to do? What's, what's your health uh, right now? So, my health is three, three. and if I use... Does it matter what trait I use, or...? It matters insofar as you can justify how the trait applies in a negative fashion. So you have, what, hidden deaths? Yeah. So hidden deaths means that you are usually hardy deep down, but you could say maybe in this situation you expect yourself to be okay and you're not. Hmm, that's a good one. Is this also a failed health check for all of us? It is, yes. You may all mark uh, a fail for health checks. 
uh, except for Malia, who's still deciding, right? Uh, using trait. Is that what I do? Using trait, or is yep, it? Uh -huh. Using trait, and then you hit against. How do I end up fail? How do I end up fail? The pal check, you said? Right, everyone right. got one success there besides go. me who got zero. We're garbage. <laughs> All right, so everyone should go where, where it says their health skill. They should be marking a fail. And they should also, where they whatever trait they use, they should be marking that they used, got a single check. All right. How do you cool. mark the fail? It's not letting me do anything with that. Put it's it in not. play mode, maybe? On the top yeah, right? Yeah, you should be in play mode. I am. Um, uh, like, top uh, circle next to it. Maybe you should be try and edit mode? No. Hold on, let me check. It's a lot. Oh, Sanjay, you can't because your health is maxed out already. Oh. Six is, six is so, the limit. Uh, your, health oh, cannot, so what happened? your health can't get any better than it already is. Wait, mm. Sanjay, you could have actually succeeded then, couldn't you? Yeah, oh, you tried. You failed anyway. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> Right. Andre was the only one of us who could have Thanks succeeded. for reminding me. Yeah. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> I thought also, we were all I need to lose. What I'm got going four to need twos. from all of you, you guys inhale and cough and hack to try and get this out of your lungs. And the you do manage to get whatever this poisonous gas is out of your lungs. Um, but the just pure uh, like difficulty of all the coughing and hacking, you can feel your chest being tight. The shortness of breath. Uh, all of you will now mark the exhausted condition. And that's in addition to hungry and thirsty, right? Yeah, you, you got hungry and thirsty from the grind. You got exhausted from the from failing this test. Oops. Okay, I'm exhausted, guys. I'm exhausted. So exhausted, as you can see, has another effect different from hungry and thirsty. May not use instinct. Darn, there goes all my free knowledge checks. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, I am going to now describe this room in detail, um, now that you're in here. Alright, this is a hallway. This, the walls of this long, narrow passage are decorated with elaborate bone flowers. Each is a skull with bones radiating out of it to form an intricate and beautiful if macabre pattern. Yeah. Uh, macabre? Yeah. M A C A B R E. B R E, yeah. Yeah, macabre. Uh, there is a funeral silence here. A, uh, probably only broken by your coughing. A set of oak iron banded double doors opens to the north just left of you guys. There are four shadowy alcoves in the wall. Uh, farther down the hallway. Uh, each has an arch of skulls and thigh bones stacked on top of each other. Sitting in each of those alcoves, you can clearly see an ancient skeletal warrior, finger bones clasped around the haft of an axe. As you guys enter this room, we bouts to fight. You can feel, you see the. They shiver, and then they're still. Nani? The, the skeletons, they shiver for a moment and then they're creepy. still. That's uh, not creepy. Wait, so you guys oh. are just inside this hallway. A little bit to your forward and to your left are those double doors that are iron banded and look really fancy. And then you can also go down the hallway to see what's at the far end. But that would take you closer to these alcoves where these skeletal warriors are. Oh, it's probably yeah. friendly, right? It's unclear whether there's an exit on the far end. Uh, it's too far, too far away uh, for your light to reach. You just think these are skeletons are friendly? Uh, I'm gonna find out, Sanjay. Why don't you go over and ask? Nah, uh, no thank you. Do you speak skeleton? Maybe. What is that? What does it even sound like? Correct. Like Correct. rattling Correct. bones. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's like the um, xylophone. Yeah. <laughs> they just play the ribs. Like, you know the song Spooky Scary Skeletons? Uh, yep. like my character it's doesn't. Comic. It's that. Perfect. 
So what's the point uh, here? You guys were fleeing in this direction from a perceived threat when the noise happened. But now you're just but inside the, the... the gate shut the behind us, right? Do you want to shut it behind you? It oh, I thought, I thought something did shut behind us. No, nothing shut behind you. It's still open oh, okay. behind you. You could shut it behind you. Because you can see the mechanism on this side of the door, too. Interesting. Um... Hmm. I, uh, well, yes, I think we should. Yeah, I agree. Doing so doesn't cost you anything. You guys, there's a sort of a, like a wheel that you turn, and it closes the stone wall behind you. Keep in Where mind that if you decide to flee down this direction, opening that quickly will now require a test. Mm-hmm. Do... These skeletons shivered. They're probably, you know, animate. Um, are they wearing torques? That is an excellent question. They are indeed wearing torques. Um, let's see. Two of them, of the four of them, are wearing jeweled torques around their necks. These torques mm -hmm. are worth 60 instead of 40 from the old ones earlier. These guys are higher ranked bodyguards, so perhaps more dangerous. But also, perhaps. if they shivered, it seems like they're probably aware of our presence, but they're also okay. Maybe since we haven't taken anything or disturbed anything, they're like Could letting be. us be. Okay, yeah, that's, a good, that's an educated guess. But who knows? So we might be able to just walk straight past them. There, now, you said there were double doors and then further down the hallway is where these guys were, right? Yep. Yeah. The double doors are like only like 5 or 10 feet in front of you on your left. This okay. hallway is like 50 feet long. It just keeps going. The alcoves are maybe like 30 feet away. You, close enough that your the, the light of your torch reaches them. Um, are there any markings or anything on the double doors? The double doors. Let's see. Uh, the double doors are simply iron banded uh, oak doors. There are no markings whatsoever. Okay. Mm. Can we, um, if I like hold my torch up to the side, can I see if there's like a little bar between locking it? The door? Yeah. You know how like there's like the big like heavy loom like. Sure. Um, you want to get up close to it and sort of like peer through basically? Yeah, just see if I see a shadow in between to see if it's locked or not without having to, like, open sure. it and make a noise. Silas walks ahead of the group to approach this door, and the skeletons shiver once more. This time, the shiver is violent, and then you see them swing their legs over the sides of their little beds, crawl out oh. of these alcoves. They turn towards you guys, form in, like, a rank. They sort of click together, like, in a rank. And then they begin to march in formation towards you, and there's pale necromantic fire burning in your eye, in their eye sockets. How many of them are there? There are four of them. Four. They are armed with iron axes, which are rusted real bad. I should tell you now how conflicts work. Now, first of all, you are in a conflict. It just matters. It's up to you what kind of conflict it is. You could do a kill conflict where you try and destroy them. You could do a drive-off conflict where you try and force them to retreat. You could do a flee conflict where you try and run away. Um, you could do a Kill capture em. conflict where you try and beat them in combat, but then just capture them instead of killing them. I say kill. I say flee because a kill combat is the only one that we can also die in. A kill conflict is the only one where you can actually die in. Any other conflict, I should tell you how conflicts work. They're not a win-lose scenario. You will have health and they will have health. And if you guys are missing at least 25% of your health, you will have you will owe your opponents a compromise. Something bad will happen have to happen to you in return for you winning the fight. So, in a kill conflict, that's usually one of you dies. If you owe them a really big compromise, because you're missing half your health, or most of your health, all of you could die. In a drive-off conflict, perhaps what happens is they 
are they run away, but they take the torques with them. They, you don't they don't like they don't the torques don't like fall off and you don't get to loot them. Basically the way conflicts work is you always get loot from them one way or another, unless a compromise says you don't. Um but like whether you choose a kill conflict or a drive off conflict or a flee conflict, that shouldn't inform your like loot should not be the reason you'd pick one because you're gonna get the same loot regardless. One way or another. It, the fiction will work work its way towards mm -hmm. towards that, and I can guarantee that for you. Uh, what's it called? So really, it's just a matter of the goal that you have in mind, which is going into this dungeon, finding Jorah, getting loot, and like the layout of the area. Like if you were gonna do a flee contract con uh, conflict, where are you going to flee to? If you were going to do a capture conflict, do you think it would be difficult to capture skeleton men or easy? Uh, drive off conflict. What kinds of methods you would use? That sort of thing. Um, that should probably. Be how easy. how wide is this hallway? It's narrow. Any sort of fight that breaks out here will be a claustrophobic one. So maybe we should try to back up into. I was gonna say into the last room, but if we think something might have. Like the sound might have drawn something that might not be a good idea either. Also, the door behind us is closed. Oh yeah, we did just close that, didn't we? So I think maybe drive off because I don't know how we like we could try and flee, but be fair though. We'd have to I make mean, a test how are we gonna it. how are we gonna drive them off? Not with fear, obviously, because they're, they're undead. You would right? drive them off with like we smack them until they run away. You smack yeah, them until they yeah, run away. yeah, basically. Um, or the other option is we try to go into the double door room and fight but if there's there, anything over oh, on yeah, the other well, side we're in fucked. There, yeah yeah i think drive off is probably our safest option if we do no, my goal is to kill so i want to kill check. you can still hit him if we drive off sanjay it's but just i want to defeat them that is my particular goal okay sanjay that's true Sa sanjay is person. uh sanjay is the kill person murder mm -hmm. he is the yeah. kill person <laughs> well, like, like his uh, guy. <laughs> his his belief is like I want to kill everything, isn't it? Defeat. And his goal is to Would defeat that count the as monsters. If we drive him off, I don't know. Would that count as defeat? Yeah, defeating we... drive defeating them. In oh, in that like case. That. Yeah. Oh, in that case, let me see what my goals. Yeah, yeah, I put defeat. So yeah, we can do uh, drive off. There. Okay. It's uh, Ian, like... I think. Oh. What's up? If we do flee, it's probably only a single check to get open the door. No, it's gonna. Be <laughs> yeah, but that they can still follow it's us. A, it's a separate it's a conflict. conflict. There's like gonna be we're gonna go, we're gonna do the conflict procedure one way or another. Mm. So like, why spend a turn fleeing? Because we'd have to make that check anyways. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Also, a conflict will always cost a turn, no matter what kind of conflict we choose. So either way, we're in turn five out of eight, I think, right now. Uh, yeah. So, this is going to be what hap the, what ha whatever happens the fifth turn is this conflict, no matter which one mm -hmm. you pick. But if we so chose to flee and had to make a check to open the door, would that make then consume an additional turn? No, the check to open the door would be part of the conflict procedure. Got it. Okay. Guys, why didn't we eat first? <laughs> we didn't have time. Yeah, we did. Everything was quiet when we entered the hallway. That's fair. And then you had yeah. to go open the doors. I, I didn't try to open it. I was just looking at it. Yeah, what you even do? You just looked. I was just trying to see if it was locked or not. He had to, he had to walk up to look. That's why. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, how could you? How could you? It was like five feet. I thought it was five. Why would you do such a thing? All right. Well, I'm trying not to drive off. I guess. Lie. All right. Okay. Sounds like we're doing a drive-off conflict. Okay. Here's how this conflict procedure works. I am going to need, hold on one second, um, where is it, where is it, da, 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 da. okay, so here's what at stake, if you guys manage to be very, very successful, these, uh, I always have to tell you at the beginning of a conflict what's at stake, so if you guys are successful, these guys will run, probably leaving behind whatever torch in the melee. They'll probably end up dropping these torques or whatever else they've got, and they'll they'll run somewhere. Whether it's through the banded doors or down the hallway, you're not totally sure. Or maybe they'll try and push past you and 
open the open the fucking door and then run through there. Who knows? But point is, one way or another, they will run away, leaving you alone. Um, if you fail to drive them off, you will be entering a kill con conflict immediately afterwards. Okay. All right. Sweet. All right. Can't wait. Um, I need you guys to pick a conflict captain. This should, in a general, <laughs> generally speaking, be whoever has the best fighter. I think I'll that's going to be Sanjay. Are you sure we don't want me to do it? I have zero fighter. All right. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah, now we'll go All ahead. of you, all of you have fighter, except for Neville. So all of you are, will provide Sanjay a helping die for what he's about to do, which is called the disposition check, or the disposition test. Neville, you can technically still help, you just have to have a, have to have a relevant skill. Mm -hmm. So do you have anything that's relevant to driving off the undead? Um, Arcanist? I have Arcanist. Oh, that reminds uh, me, Neville. You have to have a, mm -hmm. one of your three spells prepped. So which one's in your oh. now? Oh! Um, probably... What was my third one? It was... A s Levitation, Dwemer Craft... What was my third one? Oh, Ritual Binding. Uh, probably Dwemer Craft. Dwemer Craft? Okay, sounds good. Um... So... Um, yeah, would I be able to, like, use Arcanist to, like, understand the, like, necromantic magics that are okay. healing them? Sounds good. So, you're, Sanjay, cool. you're getting a helping die from every player. Um, okay. once again, uh, what Sanjay, am I doing here? Just like a dis- so you're gonna roll- you, you're gonna do me a fighter test. We're gonna add your base fighter rating to the as successes. You're gonna get- so you have a fighter four right now, right? So you're gonna get f plus four successes to the end of this, and whatever you total up, that's the health points you guys are gonna get as a party, which you will then divide amongst your party members. So in an ideal world, you're getting at least five here. Uh, if you want to, you can add traits, Sanjay, like the Heart of Battle, for example. Yep. Uh, so do which you want to add that? Uh, is this the disposition have... check? This is the disposition test. So oh, we have um, minus two we... to this because we're exhausted and hungry, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, disposition check. Um, so I'm rolling oh, right now with my base and my the help. It's eight total, right? For an, you have eight four. dice uh, from the base plus the help, but you have minus two dice because of your condition. So you actually have a total of six dice right now. Okay, it's um, minus two successes, not minus two oh, dice. Minus two successes. So actually, after we roll, we're just going to take two off of whatever you roll. So it's even worse. Okay. Um. Also. Do my gear or my um, weapon have any um, effect? Weapons usually have an effect in conflict. They do a specific thing for a specific type well, of action. Well, I know my greatsword gives them a disadvantage of defense. Yeah, that sort of thing. It doesn't It doesn't help with the disposition roll. The disposition roll is like any other test. You help it with... You get help from your friends. You use your wises. You use your traits. Wises and traits. Okay. So um, I can use Heart of Battle. You can use hard of battle. Yeah, okay, so you're gonna check off a use of that, and you get plus one die. So you you're still rolling, you're rolling nine dice, and you're gonna have minus two successes to whatever you roll. So go ahead and roll for me. This is an independent test. Uh, you're not gonna yep, mark yep. pass or fail for this. Well, independent test, or is it disposition? I put disposition. It's, oh, so there's a disposition option. Oh, yeah, you can pick that. Um, and it's health, right? Or what am I doing? Disposition, fighter, will, fighter health. Fighter. Huh? Wait, wait, I don't get it. So if I if I click on fighter check, disposition, rolling nine, and then yeah. disposition, it's will, health, nature. Do I do anything with that or? Rolling disposition, will, health, nature. Oh, um, see where it says zero? Uh, yeah. Turn that I can't into, so check off, I guess check off health. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Four Is this correct? Four precedents. Correct. I don't understand this shit how this works. Okay, Sanjay, don't use this tool. Just go to the chat and type R96 and we're just gonna R96. See. Yep. Uh, we're gonna see how many successes you roll. We're just gonna count them up naturally because I don't get it. Alright, so that's five, one, four. two, three, four, four. Four successes. 
So that's so two. Two, yeah. six, two successes. So we're going to add two to your baseline fighter, which is four. So you have a disposition of six. I will tell you now, your opponents have a total disposition of seven. Oh, so, no. Right. That means they're slightly in an advantageous position. What this actually means is, Sanjay, you have six health points to distribute amongst your party members. You must give everyone at least one health point. So everyone's going to get one, which means you have one So who gets over. the bonus one? You can give the That's bonus point to whoever you want. You are conflict captain. It is your choice. Me. Give it to me. Who it is. All right. So a Sanjay choice that surprised no one. <laughs> I'm in the front. What do you mean? Sanjay has two health points. Everyone else has one. Here's what you need to know about health points. When you take an action, the so here's how here's how combat works. Combat is a rock paper scissors game. There are four actions you can take. Uh, if you have the quick rules PowerPoint open, and you go to slide fifty three, you will get an actions interaction table. This is also in the book somewhere. I just don't remember what page. Um, there are four moves you can make in a conflict. You can attack, you can defend, you can feint, and you can maneuver. Every round of combat, you guys are you guys will collectively decide what actions you want. I'm going to pick three actions for the enemies, and then you guys will collectively decide what three actions you're going to do, who's going to do those actions, and what order you're going to do those actions in. And then, one at a time, we will both reveal our first action, and they'll go against each other, and our second actions, and they'll go against each other. Some actions... If we both, some actions when we both do them, we both get to do yeah, them normally. Yeah. Like if we both attack Sanjay, so let's say you you tell Neville, hey Neville, you're attacking, and then I make my, one of my uh, skeletons attack at the same time. Both those attacks just go through. There's no there's no versus test. They both just go through their independent tests, which is what the I means in the chart. Uh, if I defended instead, there would be a versus test, and whoever rolled better would get to do their thing. Um, so the way it works generally the, in this rock paper scissors, defends be basically beat attacks or they're versus they verse they go against attacks in a versus uh, manner. Uh, maneuvers lose really hard to I think. Uh, maneuvers lose to hold on. Let me look at this. Maneuvers lose to feints and they get, they're basically tied with maneuvers. Um, defend loses to the feint. It's, feint is really strong against maneuvers, and uh, that's all right. I don't know. Whatever. Point is, let me. Let, sorry, let me back up for a second. Let me tell you what these words mean. When you attack, you're trying to reduce your target's HP, and you reduce it by the margin of success. So if you roll an attack, and they're not rolling a defend to try and vert or a maneuver to try and verse against you. Because uh, they also rolled an attack or a feint, you're just going to roll against an, an independent test with an off of zero. So let's say you roll two successes, that means you're going to deal two damage to them. And if they rolled an attack against you, they're, they're also going to deal a certain number amount of damage to you. Whoever's making the action is putting their health on the line. If you lose your health, you just go unconscious, you can still come back up when uh, health is regenerated through the fight, which can also happen with the defend action. The defend action will work as a versus against attack and maneuver. So if you think your opponent's going to attack or maneuver, you probably want to defend to try and like beat them to the punch, so to speak, and stop them from doing their action. Because if you win the defend, the versus test, you get to go. And they don't. But also what defend does, defend is really bad against feint. If you defend and they feint, you don't get to go. They go and they kick your ass. Uh, in a, well, the way defends work is uh, the base independent obstacle is three. Uh, the margin of success determines how much health you get back. Like, you guys have a maximum disposition of six. You can restore, let's say Neville gets hit and he goes to zero health and he goes down. And then Sanja gets hit and he goes to one health. And then uh, Sanja, it's Sanjay's turn and he's like, I'm gonna do a defend. And he gets a margin of success of two. He can restore his health point and then restore Neville's health point and get him back up in the fight. So it's defensive mm. for he restoring health. I cannot stress this enough. The less health you have at the end of this fight, the worse this is going to be for you. Lose it, winning, winning, a, winning a conflict by a, like a thread, threadbare margin is basically just as bad as losing the conflict. Period. Victory. So you have to try and uh, the the margins are basically if you guys are missing at least two health, 
By the, end of this con by the end of this conflict, you are going to owe them a minor compromise. If you're missing at least three health, it's going to be a half compromise. And if you're missing at least four health, it's going to be a major compromise. That major and that half, you really want to try and avoid those. So if you can, at the end of this fight, you might want to try and weave in an extra, a couple extra defends to try and keep your health up. Okay, gotcha. so okay. Are for, attacks are for reducing your opponent's health, defends are for healing yourself. Faints are also like attacks, but they're like attacks on roids. If your opponent defends, they don't get the the defense just disappears because you you faint you you know you you juked them, and you get to hit them really hard. If they attack, your faint fails because they didn't fall for it and they smack you in the face. And if they faint, um, it's a versus test. Whoever did the better faint wins. And if they maneuver, you still get to hit them, but they also still get to maneuver. So feint is like a trickier attack. If you think they're going to defend, feint is the best thing you can do. Attack is a slightly worse option. And then lastly, maneuver. Maneuver is the really complicated one. If you're going to stare at any any slides on my PowerPoint, if you have it open, it should be 54 or 58. Maneuver, when you roll it, it has a base uh, obstacle of zero. If you roll it against attack or defend, you make a versus test. If you roll it against feint or maneuver, you make an independent test. Basically how it works is, for every, for all the margin of success that you earn, you get, you get to pay for special maneuver moves in that moment. You can give your opponent minus one dice to their next action. You can give your, the next action plus two dice for your party. You can disarm your opponent. You can re grab a weapon that's dropped, but you have to get more and more margin of success each time. So if you guys decide to maneuver, so basically, maneuver, maneuvering is for debuffing your opponent, buffing yourself, or disarming your opponent, or rearming yourself from a dropped weapon. Okay? So maneuvering is the complicated one. If you guys don't want to play with maneuver, or don't want to worry about maneuvering, don't worry about maneuvering. But if 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 um if you want to worry about maneuvering, you can. And the tests are slightly different. You should know the way this works is if you look at uh so we're doing a drive off conflict. If you decide you're attacking, you need to do fighter. If you decide you're defending, you need to do uh, will. Fainting is, a, is fighter, and maneuver is will. So let's take Neville, for example. Let's say Neville's taking an action, and you're deciding what action to give Neville. You could give him an attack or faint, but he doesn't have fighter, so he's going to be dog at it. The better idea option is to make Neville a dedicated defender or a dedicated maneuverer, constantly buffing the party or constantly restoring health. Sanji, on the other hand, has shit will, but a fantastic fighter score. He's the kind of person you want to feed attacks into. You guys get three actions per turn, and Sanji, you're, as a, ca a conflict captain, you are required to distribute them evenly. That means every single Wait. combat, three of you will get an action, and two of you will help someone else with, it, with an action they're doing with the same type of role they need. So let's say, Sanjay, you give, you make yourself do an attack, and Malia's doing a maneuver, and Ian's doing a maneuver. Steve can help you with a fighter, and then Neville can help Malia with a maneuver uh, by using his will. Everyone, you have to make it equal, uh, like you have to distribute it equally. So the next round, Malia and uh, Steve, sorry, Steve and Neville, they have to go they, this time. And this time it's maybe you and Malia who bow out. Over the course of two rounds, everyone should have bowed out twice. Okay? Uh, I guess it'll make more sense when we do it, yeah, right? Yeah, it'll make more sense I, when we do it. I, I think I get what's I think going I get too, yeah. So, so right now, you guys know, Sanjay has two health. Everyone else has one. And you risk when you're taking an action, you risk your health. So Sanjay, having more health, is more motivated to make offensive moves. The rest of you who have less health are more made, more, more motivated to use defensive moves. I'm going to tell you right now how I'm distributing their health. Three of the three of the skeletons, so there's going to be skeletons A, B, and C. Those, those guys all have one health. The last skeleton in the back, I'm giving him... Sorry, wait. Yeah, I'm giving him four health. So you Beefy should boy. easily knock out three of them, but there's a boss monster in the back, basically. All right. The last thing you should know, it sounds like it's rock, paper, scissors, right? So it sounds like it's random, like whether I'm going to beat you or you're going to beat me. In reality, my job is not to beat you guys. 
my job is to role play these monsters the way they would fight. Here's what you see about these monsters. They are in a tight formation and they march towards you with pale necromantic fire in their eyes. They seem angry that you have desecrated their graves. Um, they carry we ain't they desecrated carry, shit. They they carry axes and no yeah, other no, no other armor, no other weapons of significant of significant uh, no shield, nothing, nothing like that. And they're marching towards you in a fixed motion. So with that description, Sounds... you guys should be able to guess at the kinds kinds of things that they're going to end up doing. Sounds like they're going to be mainly just attacking, if I had to guess. Yeah, I don't know if they're clever enough to... They're like, undead, what do they have to worry not. about, right? They don't feel pain. Exactly. Um, so, if they're attacking... I mean, we don't really need to defend immediately, because no one's down. That's kind <laughs> of true, unless you're anticipating an attack, in which case... A defense oh, then we'd be able to... Attack. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, defending isn't just for healing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, you can pick the same action more than once. You can triple attack, triple defend, however you want. Uh, I will tell you, monsters will tend to not do the same things over and over again for the most part, but they'll they'll try and be a little bit more interesting, but you guys can do whatever the fuck you want. Okay, let's let's try this round out, okay? We're just gonna try we're gonna try going. So Sanjay. You are conflict mm -hmm. captain. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type into chat but not hit enter the three actions that they're doing, okay? Okay. So we have, I'm frontline right now, it seems. Um, yeah, does like where you're standing, standing matter? Where you're standing doesn't technically matter, but in the fiction we will describe it. So yeah, right now Sanjay's in the front line. That is a good description of your, and uh, we did pick an order before, so it's sort of like we've got, we've got Dante and L sort of in the front, and then everyone else sort of clustered in the back together. The hallways are narrow, so you're like, it's like wide enough, like one and a half people, so you guys kind of like overlapping on each, on each other to make sure you get a good attack. Now, another thing you might want to determine as to who makes what kind of action, Sanjay, remember that your weapons all do something. So, uh, everyone, right, what, right weapons, now. what weapon do you have, uh, Sanjay? Great sword. And it prevents opponents from receiving your attack to help attack or defend on this action. Uh, let me, let, me again? Uh, let me actually go to the actual description of it. Give me a second. Um, this massive weapon is used more like a pole arm than a sword. It grants 1D to maneuver and prevents an opponent from benefiting the, from help when attacking or defending against its wielder. Okay, gotcha. Interesting. My so, shit doesn't say that. Um, well then, that? get a new thing. Get a new thing. You are right. <laughs> new thing acquired. <laughs> Um, all right, 148. So if you guys want to know what your weapon does, I will tell you, but also it's on page 157. So yeah, Sanjay, your great sword, yeah, you have plus one dice to, to maneuvers. So Sanjay, you are encouraged to maneuver, in other words. And also, what the action that I do at the same time you're doing any action with the great sword, I cannot be helped with that attack. Okay. Now I have four skeletons, which means one of them is always going to be helping at some point, but they only get to help one action. So whether it's going to be the action you're against or another action, you don't know. So, uh, Steve, what do you have? Uh, I have a spear. It gets plus one die to, uh, maneuvering and it's got a cross on yeah. defend. I don't know what that so means. You have plus one die to defend. Oh, oh yeah. Corridors. Such yeah. as the one you're standing in right now. Cool. So <laughs> and I might also, you bypass leather armor, more. which they don't have, but that would be cool too. And also, you can throw this if you want. I can throw it. I would yep. not particularly recommend, but it's an option. Yeah, not um, really interested in doing that now, but defending yeah. could be useful with it. Okay, so so, so right now we know that Sa Steve is good at defending and maneuvering, and Sanjay's good at maneuvering and countering the enemy moves. Uh, what about Malia? What do you have? Dagger. A dagger? Okay, so daggers, successful maneuver, counts as a disarm against anyone using a spear or missile weapon, which is like a bow. They missile. are not using spears or missiles, so Malia is not particularly good or bad at anything here. Uh, Neville, what do you have? If I got a staff, it grants plus one dice to defend, it also grants plus one to tests involving hiking or climbing when carried. Okay, cool. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> Neville is going to be mostly uh, best at defending, but obviously you can do other things. And Ian, what about you? I have a shield, which is good for defending, and I have a hand axe, which is pretty neutral. 
may be thrown once per fight to change attacked versus. So yeah, so attack versus attack is usually an independent test. If you throw it, you can turn it into a versus test instead. Uh, but then you, you will have thrown your axe, which is an option, which is something you'll have to pick it up, which is going to require a maneuver at a very good one at that. Um, and you have a shield for defending. So you got you guys have a couple people who are good at defending, a couple people who are good at maneuvering, but no one who's particularly good at attacking. But attacking is a fighter skill, and you guys have a couple of good fighters. So, all right, so Sanjay, I know what I'm doing for my three actions. You have to decide what you, the three of all, the entire party decides what you guys are doing and who's doing it and who's helping. So okay, so. The easiest way to do this is tell me what your character would do in this situation first. And then we'll, and then we'll figure out what action that is. Oh, well, my character would most likely meet, um, play pack. Okay. So I was. What's up? Uh, I was just gonna say I was thinking since I'm a bit further ahead, since I went up, up to open the oh, door. Yeah, you are a little further up. I might like defend so I can like have time to like, since I'm like probably getting attacked first. Yeah. But if you want to rush up past me, we can also do that. So that's a matter of ordering. Do we put Neville's defend before Sanji's attack, or do we put Sanji's attack before Neville's defend? Up to you guys. I say put my attack before the defend because okay. then it might be few losing hit points so that you can redistribute the hit points to be successful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's right. like we've got two idea, two actions in the in the queue so far. We got one more person. What's what do you guys think? What would you do first in a situation like this? First, defend. <laughs> Raise the shield, block an incoming attack, probably. Okay, perfect. So it sounds like we've got three actions queued up. We're gonna do Sanja's gonna attack, then Neville's gonna defend, and then Ian's gonna defend. So now defend is helped with by the will skill, which means that um, one of you is going to help uh, Malia and Steve. One of you is going to help. Oh, sorry. You can also help the attack too if you have fighter. My bad. So you guys can decide who you want to attack. Help. All your all the help is doing is giving them an extra die. But if they if their health would be depleted and there's like leftover damage, it goes to the person who's helping next before anyone else. We do have extra two successes because of our um, ritual. So for just keep that in mind. For defend. defend. Yeah, for the first yeah. defend. I will help uh, Sanjay with the attack yes. with my fighter. Alright, sounds good. And the, so Sanjay's going to get an extra die. And then what about you, Malia? So uh, you can help do I need players. to have anything to help with defense or. Defending is a will, so and you, everyone has will, so you can easily help. It's just a matter of are you helping the person who's going second or helping the person who's going third. Ta I don't we think it matters. Too like much. load up on Sanjay. Uh, oh yeah, that too. If you have fighter, what? you can help Sanjay too and give him even more dice. Give me the dice. But more dice won't mean that you do more damage. It does. Right? True. Oh, it does. The more it does. Well, he gets, the more damage he does. Okay, but they're, they're one health. Doing it to, yeah, they've only got one health, so you, it wouldn't yeah. really do much. No, 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 I would help through. with it. It'll bleed through. It, he can clean oh. through. Oh, okay. Okay, so All that right, would probably then. be the most helpful then. I'll help with the yeah. attack. I yeah. have fighter. So. Try and clear out the weaklings real Spear, quickly. Great sword and dagger brought to bear against un the undead while the other two players are backing up and defending to try and. If we kill. Like. Three of them? The Will the last guy ages. still have three actions, or no? So, um, the way it works is the, That's a good uh, question. When you have fewer than three players, they people start to double up on actions. So gotcha, so he, he'll still have three yeah. actions, But he'll be doing them all himself instead. Until he defends and gets other people up. Mm, yeah. Alright, so, it sounds like you guys are doing attack, defend, defend, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this was this is what this is what I chose for them. So attack. So uh, Dante, L, and Cat, you guys move forward to go for the attack, backing up Dante's furious swing. At the same time, the lead, one of the lead Mook uh, skeleton A, not the boss skeleton, is going to move forward to try and cleave with his axe. We will now make versus checks against each other Sanjay to see who um to see who win or sorry we're not making a versus chest we're both yeah so it's not a versus they both I mean, just yeah. go for it right test. yeah so Sanjay you're gonna roll your fighter you have plus two dice to your fighter so you have fighter four so you're rolling six dice total um 
you can add your trait, but you already used Heart of Battle, so unless you have another use of it, I don't really know how you're going to do that. Um, if you have, I do have another use of it, actually. You do have another use of it? So if you want to, you can add yep. it again. Uh, not here. No, I'm not going to use it here. Okay, so you're going to roll your six dice? Uh, yes, I just want to make sure I'm not... Uh... Um, um, so it's just funny. traits and wises I can use at this point, right? If I want to make any more modifiers, correct? Um, it's traits and... Wises, right? Where no, you? You, you wouldn't use a wise for yourself here. In okay. conflicts, the only way wises get used is if someone else who's helping you, instead of helping you with a the skill, they help you with a the, they aid you with the wise. <laughs> so six dice then. Oh, okay. I should also mention one more thing. There's this thing called might. It's like a generic concept of how strong beings are in this in this world. As adventurers, you guys have a might rating of three out of eight. These guys, as skeletons, have a might rating of two out of eight. Because their might is lower than yours, you guys automatically get plus one success to to every kill, drive off, conflict, oh, nice. all the capture conflict. Uh, should that would also I, be should we change our might then on our on our oh, sheet? Oh yeah, if there's a spot to put might on your sheet, you yeah, say it's three. It's, it's up it's in three abilities. It's three for all of you. That would be true for them too. If their might was four, they would get plus one. Where's might? So keep in mind, uh, it's somewhere on your character sheet. On, under sure. abilities, in the same section as like will and health and nature and all that. Uh, it's on the very right. So Sanjay, oh, yeah, right. go ahead yes. and roll your six dice, and I'm going to go ahead and roll, and I. Come on, Sanjay. What a uh, fighter, right? Go to fighter, independent, aid, two. Oh, should be sick. I'm going to have my boss monster assist this first guy. So he's. He can't, right? Go. Because I'm just using the greatsword. Oh, prevents help. That's true. No greatsword for me. So you guys have minus two successes because of the. Modifiers. Wait, why do we have minus two sixes? Oh, right. Wait. Oh my god. Is that, is that only to disposition? I also thought that was only to disposition. I don't know. It why. says it's only I don't know. I pressed That's. I just yeah. Did you, ro you did you roll a disposition check instead of a no, individual? I, I, just, I just did an independent. Okay. What? Whatever. We know how many successes subtracting, so we know you got five, and he's getting three uh, d six. So he rolls three successes. Wow. Okay, so Rolled you guys well. get five successes. Um, I think plus an extra. I six. think that minus two isn't like it's. If you look at the dice, it was a four, four, and a five. It's just three successes. Is it? Wait, he rolled. You got a four, two, four, five, one, two. So I think um, it's saying minus two from the three. Yeah, it's so three minus oh, two. Yeah. Three. It is it's only, only three successes. Oh, it's three successes? Okay, but we have to add a success for the might difference, right? Yeah, so, so four total. Okay, four, so yeah. four total, and I got three successes against you. So here's what happens. Um, Sanjay mm -hmm. goes flying in, cleaves with his greatsword with the support of stabbing from spear and dagger, and he takes out all three of the mook skeletons and damages okay. cuts up, cuts at the boss skeleton taking it down at three health but not without that axe searing into his uh shoulder and also hitting probably me because i was the first one to step up to defend that's true you were the first one to step up to defend let's pick you um that, I or, not to defend but to me. help with the attack so that three damage two of it's going to sanjay knocking him out of this fight one of it's going to Steve, knocking him out of this fight. So that's oh, now at a good. total disposition of three out of six. You must new, pick Not... a new, you have to pick a new conflict captain to temporarily take up Sanjay's mantle. Who's that going to be? Well, that's Oof. Bad. Not to make this worse for us, but they're using an axe, right? Doesn't that grant an extra success oh, to attack? Oh, extra success. That is oh true. my god. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So that extra uh, uh, one more point of damage, which is going to hit Malia. So she's actually. <laughs> so all well. three of us went down. So in a, in a right. grand <laughs> melee, three skeletons and three players get on, knocked unconscious. Now, a defend can bring you guys back up, but anyway, <laughs> uh, between Neville and Ian, which of these conflict happens now? I guess me, because I have some fighter. Okay. So yeah, I don't have any. 
Yeah, and you are conflict captain. The second uh, action they are going to do is the maneuver action. Uh, and you guys are doing a defend, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So when you're defending and they're maneuvering, that's a versus test. So only one of us is going to actually get to do this action. So they're going to maneuver. Um, they have... Uh... Hang on. Was it a specific person? Or yeah, I was about to say. Maneuver and now they're dead. Okay. It was me yeah. and I'm up. Dead. No, all three of them. All three oh. of them are dead. No, no, no. Um, he's talking about the skeletons. Yes. Oh. Skeleton B was going to do uh, the maneuver and skeleton C... It was all three of the mooks who were acting. So because they're dead, they don't. the boss monster does not pick up where they left off. So they actually lose their second and third actions. So you are basically maneuvering, or sorry, you're both basically defending independently. So you can go ahead and roll Ian. Uh, you're gonna roll a uh, will test. Uh, no one is helping you, so you're just basically rolling your straight will. You can use a trait if you want. But he's so not both Ian and I are rolling right? defense? Yeah, but we'll go in order. So Ian first. I thought I was first. Oh, never mind. Neville first. Yeah, Neville was first. So it's independent. Um, I, I, you said I'm not using a trait or anything? Or, you can if you want. Yeah. I don't think either of mine are relevant here. Okay. Um, and then I have one success from gear... Or one extra dice from gear, and then two extra successes from my from the thing, right? Or wait, was it an extra success or extra dice? Extra dice, okay. Yeah. So the staff is giving you an extra die. Okay. Uh, the extra successes, where are they coming from? The ritual. Yes, that's true. I forgot. This is your first defend. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that correct? Is that the right number of successes? Five successes Besides is the minus correct. Two, yeah. yeah, I don't know where that minus why. Yeah, yeah, it's on independent. I don't know what this fucking how this sheet works. It might just be saying it just in case, like it is a disposition. I don't know. So to that five, we're adding two, right? Uh, yes. So it's seven. Uh, so what this basically looks like, Silas, you're backing up. Uh, but you see these guys go down and maybe you decide, all right, hold on, let's slightly adjust this plan, move forward with your shield, brace it, you know, as this melee... Attack. I don't have a shield. Oh, my bad. Move forward with your staff, sort of waving yep. off, waving off <laughs> the attackers, and you sort of grab these guys, and you pull mm -hmm. them up, and like slap them around a little bit, and they wake back up, they're like, oh, what happened? Um, because you're recovering seven health and you are full, you get to give it to whoever you want, and seven is more than enough to get everyone back up to full. So, okay. Um, Sanjay still is the two health player, so he still gets that extra point. Mm -hmm. um, Alright, cool. And now, Ian, you would get to defend two. Uh, the, you can roll if you want to, but there's technically no effect because you're not bursting anything because they lost their action, and also you're not missing any health, so the defend wouldn't matter anyway. So we're just Do I mark a success for this for the will or no? We'll get to that. Okay. Don't don't worry about successes or fails for the conflict. Uh, Got pass it. fails for advancement for the conflict. We'll get to that at the end. Um, cool. All right. So now we're in round two. Dante, you take back the mantle of conflict captain. In the last conflict, Malia. It was me. Malia and Steve yeah. do not act, so they must get actions this time. You can decide who the third person in action is, though. Or all of you can. So let us let me ask you, Malia and Steve, you guys both just got knocked unconscious when you charged ahead with Dante, and suddenly you find, yourself, you find Silas picking you back up, and you look over, and you're only facing one big bad boss monster uh, skeletal warrior left. And you guys are at full disposition, so if you won this fight right now, you would owe no compromise. Well, I don't think it would be a bad... These guys seem to be pretty attack-heavy. It might not be the worst thing to defend first if they have an attack coming. And then, like, try and capitalize on that. The, Unless the he tries yeah. to defend to get his, his goons yeah. back. Yeah, That's true. Because, yeah, we're full. Just, yeah, 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 never mind. After seeing his goons getting destroyed, maybe he wants to defend. I think I... Want to? Um, what's the one that's good against defense? Faint. Is that a faint? Yep. Yeah, faint might not be a bad idea. Oh, I forgot to actually turn my actions on. Well. 
Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I want to faint. Okay, so it sounds like Steve is going to go first with the faint act, att action. Okay, sounds good. What about you, Malia? I don't understand what the faint action is. Basically, the it's way like it works when... is, if they're defending, faint makes it so that they never defended, you just get to kick their ass. If they're attacking, it makes it so that you never did anything, and they get to kick your ass. So it's a high-risk, high-reward move. Think about it like this, like you're about oh. to attack somebody, like let's just say you're about to punch somebody and they like brace themselves but you actually don't punch them. You just like, you, like hold back and then they like... And then they yeah, drop exactly. their guard and then you go to give them the haymaker. Exactly. My worry, Steve, is that these guys might not care about their allies and if they keep attacking you might get a little fucked if they faint. Well, yeah, yeah, but in... Well, well, I don't think he's gonna faint. But if he attacks and you faint, then you get fucked. Oh. Well, and I these guys seem pretty going attack, attack heavy. Or defend. Attack, I mean, should not faint. we've we, we've seen happens. them we've seen them do three things so far. One of the things was a defend. No, it wasn't. No, it was they attack, maneuver, maneuver attack. Yeah. Oh, I, th I thought it was an attack, defend, attack. My bad. No, I expect him to attack. I also think he'll attack. I think he's going to defend. Can we pick something that is equal either way? We defend as well. Is that? You both just we defend the and they faint. No, well, we let's be the third faint, person though. to make an action. By the way, huh? Oh yeah, the third person to make an action. That's true. <laughs> if we get them to zero, but we have a third action Actually, for defend, I'm, will I, that I count for faint. a disposition or no? I I want to maneuver. I think you don't get to if at the second their disposition hits zero, mm -hmm. the fight ends. So if Steve, let's say let's say this hypothetical situation happens. Steve does a um, what's it called? A, um, I get a bonus to it, don't I? Let's say Steve does a faint do. and they do an attack. Or no, let's say that Steve and, Steve and the enemy both attack, and Steve kills the enemy, but then the enemy deals three damage to you guys. The fight is over, and you guys get half compromise. Mm -hmm. mm, but I also get a bonus to defending. Right, Steve, what do you want to do? I don't know. <laughs> I let's. I'll propose maneuver, defend, attack. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds so good I, to I, me. I get a bonus to maneuvering with the spear. So. Okay, so Steve's maneuvering. Malia, do you want to be the one defending or the one attacking? Um, I can defend. I'll do that. Okay, so defend. Defend is used with will. Okay, so she, she, so Malia is going second with the defend action, and then lastly, we get an attack to round it out. Conflict captain so who's, who's making the attack? Me. You? Yes, okay, probably, good. probably right, Dante cool. the Destroyer. Um, these are the actions they picked. So, what ends up happening is the boss monster sort of... Told you it was a defend! Yeah, shield damn. ...raises its axe uh, as it tries to walk over to its allies uh, in a marching order. Uh, and in the meantime, you guys maneuver. So a defend is, this is a versus, versus right? To maneuver. So Were we supposed to pick who's helping who? Oh, my bad. Oh, wait, actually, no, we're good. Uh, there was something I wanted to change about the way combat works in Torchbearer, so I'm actually glad that I forgot this time. Uh, here's how we're <laughs> going to actually do helping. Uh, the two of you who are helping, which is Neville and Ian, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys, instead of deciding how you help in the beginning I'm, i actually wanted to change combat so that you guys can help after you see the results so after you see let's say we i do this defend versus steve's maneuver and he loses by one you can toss him an extra die as your help so you can do it gotcha you can do it after you see the results i feel like that's a little bit more dynamic than just saying like mm -hmm. i help and then you mm -hmm. forget about the rest of the fight you know so i like that a little bit better so it's actually a good thing that i forgot you can jump in if steve looks like he's going to lose this versus test which, by the way, they are rolling just a 3d6. Right, because they can't get help. We, wait, so do you, we can help after he rolls the dice or before? After, after I think, right? Yeah. Got it. Like, okay, normally, okay. the rules say you, you the help comes before. I'm telling you, I'm mm -hmm. changing Torchbearer's combat so that helpers come after in conflicts. Because so I what am I rolling here? A, I want it to be a little bit, I don't know, I just like that a little bit better. So yeah, you're, rolling, yeah. you're rolling maneuver, which is a will test in this context. Will test. Okay. So go ahead and roll will. If you want to add traits, you can add traits, and they will help you afterwards if they feel like it's necessary. You need to beat 
two successes. If you tie so, with them, so it's a, a versus of against. Or wait, is it a versus or is it just independent? Um, it's a versus, but I already rolled for them, so you. Can okay, so I'll, I'll just do independent yeah. against two. Um. And. I get. You guys think that the rolling tools on the sheet are unwieldy. You can just roll dice on roll twenty the normal the normal way we do it. I think I'm. Yeah, I think that. I think I might do that uh, so because. Uh, so it's four, and I get plus one from my spear. So five. Uh, and I don't think I get any other bonuses, right? Because I'm not getting help at the moment, so. Yeah, they might help you after the fact. Yeah. Oh, That's well, it might help if I roll. Five. Yeah, it might help if I actually rolled the right thing, right? Yep. Uh, R5 D6. Where would you find a D5, Steve? Yeah, I know, right? What's that look like? <laughs> so that's uh, four successes. Four successes. So that means they can help it. Now, Ian and Neville, he won the versus test, which means the opponent fails to defend. Oh my god, Senpai, mm -hmm. you're so loud. Oh my god, loud. A little bit late. There anyway, we go. Um, God, I yeah, use this spell bit. all the time. I know. It's just so good for undead fights. It right? really is. Anyway, yep. um, what's it called? Uh, That's some funny Now, uh, Neville and Ian, if you want him, he has a margin of success of one on his maneuver right now, which means the only thing he's going to be able to do is. Is it two? How many he has four successes? I got four successes. Oh, I, I got a six, five, five, four. He has a margin of success of two. So, Steve, with that. The only thing you're going to be able to do is give the next action plus two dice. If they want to give you a couple extra successes, if you get a third success, you could either disarm your opponent or you could minus one D plus two D. You can like split it between the two costs, you know? Wait, say that again? So the way it works is you have a margin of success of two. Right. To give the opponent minus one dice on their next attack or the, mm -hmm. on their next action, cost one of these margin of one of these points that you just got okay to give the next action of your guys plus two dice that costs uh two points right now you only have two points so that's the only option you can pick you can't pick one option more than once so you can't pick the cost one option twice technically speaking, okay. if you wanted to just waste a point you could pick that option but i don't see a reason why you do that if you if yeah. Neville or Ian jump in and give you an extra dice and that ends up being a success, you would have a margin of success of three. Then you would have so I could options. do both of those options. You could do both of those options, or you could do the cost three option, which is disarming your opponent. Okay. And then they need to get a margin of uh, they need to maneuver with a margin of four to rearm themselves. What did we do? We did maneuver. Yeah. Like yeah, I did a maneuver. I want to join. So if. <laughs> Malia's a defending next, and they're attacking, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have to roll for that, we just... Or, like, we don't have to... It's not... Their attack automatically fails, right? No, no it's, it's a versus. versus no, it, it is, it a, is versus. a versus. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The only situation, because, there is no situation yeah. in which an attack automatically fails. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Defends fail against feints, and feints fail against attacks. That's the only time where you don't roll on Gotcha, you. okay. So, Steve, so I think wanna... I'm... Oh, you, you think I'm tossing in your help? No, no, I think I'm going to hold off. Okay, what about you, Ian? I'm also holding off. Alright, sounds okay, good. But I good. will use the two for giving plus defense. Or cool. plus whatever, one plus die for the next. Malia. Yep. Alright, so yeah. Malia is that, that, that one. <laughs> Malia, you're now defending, and they're attacking. So we're going to do a roll again. I'm going to do plus 3d6, and then add a success. So the what you're trying to beat is Oof. a four. I got Ooh. four successes. So I you're am gonna glad roll. I gave her the plus two. You, yeah. You have you're gonna, what's your what's your will, Malia? Five. Five. Okay. So you're gonna roll five dice plus two from Steve's maneuver. So you're gonna roll a total of seven dice here. And, and then you guys this, can also. Is this Malia's first defend? I think so. Yeah. It's yes. Their, so it's her first action. So it's plus, plus another two. two. Uh, that was there's no way. Please don't fail. There's she, no way. She's going to get to roll nine dice here, right? Yeah. Okay. So. It's two okay. successes, not two dice. That's two successes. What buttons do I press? So I, let's not worry about pressing. Uh, you're rolling. Uh, go, go, do you have the go, go to the chat tab. It's the first tab there. If you go back over to uh, the actual roll 20 game. 
Oh, it's okay. To, she's got her uh, thing maximized. Yeah, I, her, I don't uh, like character that sheet. character sheet, man. The character sheet is whack. Yep, yep, so in the chat, you're going to type uh, slash R on, on your keyboard. There you go. I, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Use the keyboard before uh, the ink. And then how many is she rolling? Nine. Seven or nine? Nine? No, sorry. All right. Wait, where's seven? So, seven plus two, right? Seven and she okay. two extra successes. So slash r space uh seven d six. Seven d six D. As in dice. Oh, that makes more sense. I was like, what's a B yes. six? <laughs> and then if you press enter, that should roll it for you. Okay, so she uh, got five three. successes. Oh, oh yeah, five because it's the two so uh your five teed, right? successes is better than his four um, successes. So he doesn't get to th do his attack, but you get to do your defend, which means you would recover one point of health. I don't think anyone's missing health, so we move on, right? Right. Me turn. Okay, Sanjay, you're up. Go, go right, ahead. I'm, I'm going to roll the same thing I just did because I, I'm doing another attack. What is, what is my thing? Six? I got three successes. I have a plus one because of my axe, so three successes. So you have to be three successes, Sanjay. It's not, no. was my... It's a versus uh, Oh, yeah, you just didn't do the plus one. No, it's not a versus test, right? Because it's... They're both attacking? They're both yeah, attacking. they're both independent. independent test, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, what is it? Are these... What are we rolling? 66? So, in a weird way, we almost don't want to kill him here, because we want to be able to defend to get our health back up and then kill him. Well, I mean, I don't have a choice here. It's yeah. Right, right, right. But I'm just is saying it for me and Ian, we're throwing our help in. Is it just 46 because I'm not getting any help or aid, right? You're going to roll 46. So, Ian, and, Ian and Neville are probably going to jump in on this, but... I got a zero. That's one nice. success? One success. So I, one assume, success, but... I assume Ian and Neville, you want to jump in on this? Well, I wonder if we want to, because no one's got a point. If we defend, we can end better. But also, but our help end, like, we'll... The, this is the end of the round. So like if we don't help now, it just gets wasted, right? So yeah. you he has three health left. One of you could help, the other one could not. Oh. I also don't think I can help. I don't have fighter. I can. Oh, okay. Well, then why, don't you, why don't you just have if you, if you can tack off one more health from him and get him down to one health, that would be good, right? Yeah. So Sanjay. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes. Go ahead and roll an extra d6 because Ian's helping you out. He, he comes in to back you up with his axe. Okay, it didn't matter. Oh. So, Sanjay comes in with the great axe, bashes against the sting. Great sword. Sorry, great sword. Bashes against the sting and shaves off a couple more bone material, but then it smacks him in the face with a iron axe. Damn it. Which then also hits Ian, so Sanjay and Ian go down. Good okay. dang it, okay. Bobby. Alright. Uh, I have my next set of uh, actions already ready to go, so go ahead and decide. I think Ian was our sub-captain, so now you guys have to decide a third person who is now the conflict captain. I'll do it. All right, Steve, yeah. your conflict captain. Everyone gets one action here. How what's the order? What's the actions? All right. Uh... Oh, yeah, there's only three of us left, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, well, what do we think he's going to do? What did he I don't know, faint? man. He might try to faint, you guys. I don't know. I, I feel like he's no, gonna I, try to defend to get his. I think he's gonna try to defend again to get his people back. Sanjay, we're dead. Oh. Yeah. You mad at? I think he. I don't know. I don't know. So do you think he's gonna like... I don't care if you talk or you're knocked out. Is he okay? You think he's gonna defend, attack, attack again? That's what I feel like. His position now is basically the same as his position at the last turn, right? Some of ours, half of ours, down. Half, most all of his allies are down. So, like, it's not unreasonable to think he might do the same thing again. So then... He, he can bring his allies back with defense, same as us, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. yeah. Hmm. So then lead with a feint? Oh, boy. If he, yeah, maybe lead with a feint? <laughs> and he is packed, so we just get bonked and TPK? Hopefully yeah, not. So, but you don't die because this isn't a kill. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, yeah. I know. Yeah. Uh, so maybe faint, like defend, attack? Uh, but one attack from him could easily kill all three of you. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. All three of you. 
So maybe right. defend faint attack. So we we defend sure. defend attack attack. Or maybe defend attack. I'm, I don't know. I, I'm leaning towards defend attack attack. I almost think maybe def because he has two health, right? Maybe defend or de attack defend, defend attack. I was thinking defend attack defend. That way, like, if we don't manage to kill him, we can start the next yeah. round off high, so I'm we like, won't uh, have to, like, spend some time defending. Okay. That's fine. So, who's yeah. defending, who's attacking, and in what order? Um, Maybe we have... So, I, I can't attack. Or rather, I'm terrible at it. Steve, you still have your successes from your defend, from your I ritual. I have the successes for the defense, uh, plus I get one bonus die for defending in narrow corridors mention, with a spear. If you, get, if you get Sanjay and Malia up early... They can then start having mm -hmm. later actions. So, so maybe so I'll Steve defend. defends first, then Malia attacks, and I'll defend last? Yeah. Okay. okay. Just because I, like I can't attack, so... And so, we want to get Steve's early successes up. What are you guys doing? Defend, attack, defend? Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Steve, Malia, me. They're doing defend, attack, attack. So okay. we're doing two defends against each other, so they're just... They did do the same thing again. Yep, this is this is not great. <laughs> I just remembered something, by the way. I forgot that defend is something that has a base obstacle of three. So uh, okay, that matters. Oh now. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So oh, oh wait. Oh, so okay. he's gonna get some of his guys up, but we'll get our guys well, up he's too. He's only rolling three dice, so he, so he might can't. not beat the obstacle. Oh, yeah, he, he he might not. In fact, he actually straight up. Yeah can't beat the obstacle right now. Why well, I... then let me... Wait, why not? Mine. Um, well, he can match the obstacle, but you... I think defend... Do you get one minimum at least? Let me check. I think it is one Oh, hold on, I remember now. Defend gives you health points back equal to mm. one plus the margin of success. So he can get one uh, okay. back if he succeeds this. So he's gonna roll okay. a 3d6, and if he gets all successes, he gets to get one point back. But she does not, so he fails to get anything. Thank God. So Steve, so he still has two health. Your okay. defend, which is basically it's your will, defense. right? It is will. My will. And you're forward. adding two successes if you want. You don't have to. I can I can hold on to the. You can hold on to that benefit if you want to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna hold on to it then. Well, you can see what happens first, and then you can yeah, decide yeah. whether you want to use it. Okay, so my will, and then also I get the plus one for defending in a narrow corridor. So you should be rolling like five, right? Yeah. Alright, sounds good. Well, so I succeeded one of them. That is one success, so you also don't- nothing happens here. If you spend the thing, you'll get two- you'll be able to get one, one and person. bring up yeah. Sanjay or Ian. Right. Um... Oh, it's Ian who's down, not really on my bed. I think if you bring up Sanjay, he can at least help with the attack. That's true. Um... Yeah, I may as well. Okay, so you're gonna spend- so you get- so you beat- match the ob of three, so one person comes up, so you wanna bring Sanjay or Ian up? Uh, Sanjay. Sanjay it is. Alright, Sanjay, you are back with one out of two health. So you can toss nice. in help on one of these other actions. Uh, who's doing the attack in the middle? Malia. Malia, is. Malia? Okay, so Malia, you are rolling your fighter rating. And I'm also rolling, rolling a fighter rating, and I have plus one success. So, the damage you guys are going to end up taking is three. Oh, jeez. Hear yeah, that again? That's uh, all of it's us. It's a good... <laughs> or, no, but, no we, brought up, we brought up Sanjay, yeah. so we we're okay. <laughs> No, we're not. And Malia, you're gonna roll your fighter. Uh, so what's your fighter? Three. Three. Wait, okay. So, so if Sanjay's gonna, to Sanjay can decide to toss in his health afterwards. So you're just rolling the three d six. Okay. Does the dagger oh, do I did anything? It wrong. S slash R, not R slash. Damn it. You were close. Mm. Uh, but there's that's two. That's two damage. And if I recall correctly, our opponent has two, two health, I two think, health. right? So he goes because he didn't recover one. Yeah, this he, is really bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh lord. Malia goes goes in, steel flashing, takes this guy down as it bats her away with her with its axe. 
takes her down too. You guys take three damage, so that means Malia's going down, and then I'm doing bleed over damage to two people, so I guess what I'll pick. I think Sanjay's the only one left, I guess, Sanjay. right? Because he was the last one to come up, or yeah, <laughs> just got a couple. Or, or maybe the one in the back who was. Uh, yeah, we're saying you like since you're still getting up, it'll probably yeah, hit me and Sanjay. Steve. Yeah, that makes sense. So, no, yeah. no, it doesn't so make sense. Leo, Don't do then it. Sanjay, then either Steve or who? Who did the action? The first action? Neville was the last, the one in the back. I did the first action. Okay, so then Steve. So everyone, yeah. then Neville goes down. <laughs> it's just me. And you guys no. end with a distribution of one out of six. So now you owe a major compromise. Okay. Oh, um, good. Good. Cool. <laughs> uh, We're doing great, guys. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. This isn't that Wait, We bad. owe a major compromise, we won! Yeah, I know, right? Isn't it crazy? Uh, what a Pyrrhic victory. Pyrrhic victory, yes, exactly. Man, we should have let that skeleton kill us, he would have had to pay us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they would have owed us a compromise. That is exactly how that works, yep. Alright, so... I don't see why it wouldn't be. It's like when you get hit by a car on campus and you get free tuition. Exactly. <laughs> got hit by a car, what? So his Excuse goal me? was to try and capture you guys or drive you out instead. So what ends up happening is, all right, so here's what ends up happening. So Malia is going in for the kill. It's like, it's like tussling with her with its ax. Um, the last thing that happens is it, like, chucks its axe at her, but kind of lazily. Uh, which she just neatly ducks under and stabs it with, and stabs her with her own dagger. The axe, I guess, like, sails through the air, <laughs> takes out Sanjay and Steve. <laughs> as soon as they get up to you, it's like, you recover, and then I'm like... Uh, yeah, it takes out Sanjay and Steve. On, on its way there, and then, um, Boomerang. I don't know, like, tears through a bunch of their gear. Let's, let's say that. So, um, let's say that, so the way this compromise works is I will offer you guys a compromise. You guys think, ah, let's, we don't like this one, give us a different one. I'll try and think of a different one. We have to kind of, we kind of have to agree on the compromise and decide that, okay, yeah, this sounds fair for a major um, compromise. You know what we forgot about? What? Armor. Yeah, we armor, armor absorbs one point of damage. Yeah, I was about to say, what the fuck? Okay, hold on, let's see how the changes. <laughs> it's gonna change the Imagine things a having lot. armor. Sanja, you have armor? I, ha I have a lot of armor, what do you mean? Okay, oh, you, uh, yeah, what do you have? Do you have both a helmet and I have and a leather? helmet? I have leather armor and a cloak, I don't know if cloak okay, is Okay, so Sanjay would have blocked two points of the three damage coming at you guys. And Steve, you have armor? I have leather armor, yeah. So Steve would have blocked the damage to him too. Malia, do you have armor? It's a cloak armor. A cloak is not armor, no. I, I think you do have yeah, leather armor. armor, don't you? I, I think as a burglar you got it. Alright, I don't try to do us in. I mean, we all forgot about it. Yeah, we all mm -hmm. forgot about it. I forgot about it too. It's okay. I just, I didn't it. It. I just don't until, have armor. It, it wasn't, wasn't until you said that it cleaved through our armor that I was like, wait, we have that. I have armor. <laughs> oh, you're right, I have leather armor, yeah. Okay, cool. So no one would have fucking gone down from that hit. So in reality, just your disposition is 5 or um, 6? Hold on. Uh, armor absorbs damage only when you are directly targeted, when you are leading a, uh, oh, an yeah, action in a conflict, mm -hmm. and the other side does damage to you. So, would have been, so it would have, have, it would have affected a lot of stuff, like, through the fight. Yeah. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come up with some sort of minor compromise and just move on with our lives. <laughs> that works for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's the and we're gonna compromising to compromise. Heroes. We will compromise to compromise. Exactly. All right. Um, also, okay. when you take damage, you roll to block it. It's roll to block, or is it roll? To when you take damage, 
when you take damage, uh, roll 1d6. On a 4d6, your leather armor absorbs one point of damage. On a 1 through 3, it does not absorb damage. You can only make this roll once per fight, but the armor is not damaged or destroyed by absorbing hits. Hmm. Oh, I thought leather armor broke, though. Uh, you break. chain armor can break, I think. Yeah, leather is too durable, dude. Yeah, chain armor breaks. Leather armor How does that make break? sense? <laughs> leather armor does not break. Leather isn't rely isn't as reliable as chain and plate, but it's more durable. So it blocks one point of damage once per fight. If you when you roll one d six, you can only make this roll once per fight. And then chain armor absorbs one point of damage guaranteed. And then you roll the one d six to see if it breaks. So I guess chain is technically Best better thing. by a significant degree. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh. Okay. Hey. Uh, Let's just do the minor uh, compromise. Yeah, we're just gonna do a minor compromise and move on with our lives, and remember, yeah. to remember that lot next time. Wow, leather armor is more complicated than I thought it would be. I thought it would just be a shittier version of chain armor, but it's not. Um, I kind of like that though. It's... Okay. So, I guess it doesn't matter for me though. Yeah, you don't have armor. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. get out. I of like, here, can't yeah. wear armor, right? Because I'm a magician. Who yeah. still has a? Um, who still has their water flasks on them? Does everyone still have a full water flask? Yeah. I think so. Okay, mm -hmm. let's say that the minor conflict is that in the tussle, everyone's armor, everyone's water flasks, like, either fall and are stepped on, or sliced by an act, and one way or another, your water flasks are damaged. And you lose How's that minor? What the fuck? That's minor. That's fucking minor. <laughs> That's a minor. That's way more minor. Than that. Water. Major is somebody's life, isn't it? Major is like you guys get injured or they drive yeah, you out. Yeah, we didn't. The other we didn't get any conditions. So. God, if only we had drank our water before oh, the fight. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, 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 okay. We'll do. It. How about everybody except Neville? Neville was never even in the front line. Everybody accepts Neville. All right. Uh, sure. That makes sense to me. I'm okay with that. Cool. I'll keep. My, I, I guess I won't complain about getting to keep stuff. Neville gets to keep his water. The rest of you. The rest of you. Please mark your water skin as. I don't even know if you can mark this damage, but if you can, please mark it as damage. The, there is. There's a little damaged uh, yeah, say, tick that yeah, you can okay. do say underneath that it's it. Empty. If, if you have like in parentheses full or anything like that, say that it's empty instead. Okay. The conflict is over. Um. Uh, what does water skin do? Again? To keep one. Dude, we should have got one. Yes, yeah, so you get to keep one. Only one of them is damaged. Okay. Okay, so yeah, we're... You want to some water, buddy? No. We're back at the Vault of Bone Flowers. You guys drove off these scouts. So the ones that were unconscious, they don't, like, stay unconscious. All four of these skeletons, because you did not kill them, they are driven off. You see them flee to the far side of the... Um, of the, uh, what's it called? Of the hallway. And then you hear what sounds like scraping noises. It sounds like they're trying to get through a barrier on the far side, but failing to. We go. So I totally forgot I had three holy water packed, which adds an extra dice against um, attack or faints <laughs> against undead. We're so good at this game. <laughs> it's, okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's not over. We can still make Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can Yeah, yeah. This will be useful. I thought you guys were supposed to know how to play already. <laughs> this is our first time ever playing. Okay, I have no idea what to do this one. Okay. That was turn five out of six. It is currently turn six out of whoops. Huh? It's currently turn six out of eight. And my music stopped. Oh wait, no, I think it is playing. Okay, yeah, so it's turn six out of eight. I just reposted the description of this room. You've got the doors on your left. Anything else about this room you might want to investigate? A couple doors behind you if you wanted to backtrack, but you technically think there's danger in that direction, so maybe you don't want to. You could go ahead to see where those skeletons ran to. Go into this door on the, your left. It's also this double. Yeah, the double doors on your left, or doors. go to where those skeletons went. Uh, should we eat? Um, oh, yeah, we yeah. should eat. Yeah. We should spend a minute and eat. So, all of you should either drink water if you have any left, or eat a portion of your rations. 
Uh, you may I, also decide, instead of eating right now, you could also camp, if you feel like this is a decent spot to camp. I mean, there's skeletons nearby, so... It's yeah, I think we're... Camp, I, agree. I think we're still okay. Let's go back into the poison gas and camp there. Perfect, yeah, right agree. underneath it. Well, that mm -hmm. Maybe it's again. sleeping gas. Can we rig it to trigger it again? It was sleeping gas, yeah. <laughs> was it actually? It was, yeah, uh-huh. Oh, oh I was okay. kidding, but all right, we'll yeah. we'll take a good nap there. One of the, one of the books like suggested a <laughs> twist of you guys falling unconscious, but I decided to do the ex other suggested twist of exhausting you instead. Um, yeah, so I think you guys have a couple conditions, so that would be a reason to camp. But if, otherwise, you could keep going. Yeah, I think if everybody eats or drinks, then we should just be exhausted, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, ration okay, it so is. Everyone ate or drank, so you guys can check off. The, uh, you can remove the hungry and thirsty and let me know what you want to do well hang on uh, who's, I imagine we should like consolidate rations so like your pockets get emptied so, that like, I spend a, oh that's smart yeah. Idea. oh wow yeah that is smart so, I mean I just drank water so my We'll be able to free up one inventory space. Yeah. No, well, we have far more rations than water, especially which is, with what has happened. That's one portion true. of rations, so, maybe... old. so I think eat rations instead of water. Yeah, we can do that. Um, shall I just burn through everything I have <laughs> for everyone? We have what? five people, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you would go through. I, mean, I don't know. How... Shall I just remove five from me? And we're good. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, works. if you want to do that. That sounds good. So no one else is changing. I'll make it a little easier. Only Ian is changing his inventory. That was far smart. Very good. We are good yeah. players. It's been Sorry, done. At the end of the fight. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Now we decided. My to my first <laughs> like reaction to what I wanted to do in the fight was right both times, and then I changed it and got bonked for it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Listen, listen, uh, we need to do a really quick advancement. Um, if you, so you guys did fighter tests and you did will tests. You can mark either a pass or a fail if you either pass or fail either of these, but you only get to mark one pass or fail for one skill. So Sanjay, for example, passed, uh, he did in, an independent fighter test when he attacked. So he can mark a pass or a fail, doesn't matter. Uh, another example is when you guys got to do independent uh, tests for defending. You can once again pass a mark either oh. a pass or a fail. So we forgot to add dice for or our might towards the end, I think. That sounds like something we forgot to do. Oh yeah, we did. We, we, we just forget to do everything in this game. Yeah, what is this game? Okay? Listen, it reminds us It's it's fine. It, it reminds it's fine. me it's of when we game. played Nemesis. <laughs> yeah. Alright, listen, listen, listen. Uh, We're learning, so it's so basically fine. Basically what's gonna happen is if you never attack, you shouldn't pick fighter, and if you never defend it, you shouldn't pick will, but you can mark either a pass or a fail for either one of those right now. Um, whatever you feel like is harder to get, that's what I would mark. Whatever you're missing. If I didn't fail. Did you never fail a will test? I made, I think, one will check test, and then that was it. And you, and you were, wait, did you, was it an independent test or a versus test? Um, it has to be an independent test, right? I'll be right back. No, I think it was a versus against their maneuver, right? Oh, yeah, that, that's true. It could be a versus against a maneuver. So were you successful? Yeah, I remember it was successful because I got two points to... Uh, it was literally the second action of the fight. Gotcha, okay. Um, I, I mean, I know I was successful. Okay, I just so don't remember what it was. Success for you well, then. Okay. But, like, I can't I'm mark a failure even I if, did. I if I didn't fail, right? Uh, what's up, Apple? I can't mark a failure since I didn't fail, right? Yeah, uh-huh. Cool. So, uh, okay. Uh, Steve, uh, you did, like, attacks and were successful, or, or they were independent tests at some times, so you can mark did a pass or fail for that. Uh, did a maneuver. He did I a did maneuver, a maneuver. So you can, that was also, I think, an independent test, I want to I thought, say. wasn't no, that a versus? It was a versus and you were successful. You can mark a pass for Will. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll do that. I'll pass the so well. Everyone else, Good. everyone should have picked something to advance, pass or fail, wizard, or fighter or will. Right? D d don't think too hard about the decision. It's not that important this early. 
Um, yeah. What's it called? Which way do you want to... You guys all ate, because Ian fed, fed all of you. You guys all ate from the... Uh, from Ian's soup kitchen. So, <laughs> now you guys are only exhausted. And you lost some of your water, but you still have most of your supplies left. Um, you guys have to relight new torches, because the, that turn just exhausted. You have so, been, like Ian mentioned before... We have Max Will, F. Yes, that is one Rip. of the spots. Rip. <laughs> uh, like we did with the rations, we should probably consolidate the torches we're using um, to free up spaces. That's also so, smart. Um, so the three people so, holding torches are me, Malia, and Ian? Right. So I have in me. And, and you, okay. So I have... My pa like my belt pouch has three torches in it, so I can just eliminate that for our next round, and then open up that pouch. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, right. cool. Okay. So Neville passes around new torches for everybody. Um, uh, did, did the skeletons drop anything? Oh. Oh yeah. That's loot, right. Loot. You always, you always get loot. I forgot. If you win, if you no. win, you always get loot. Okay. Here's now that I have an open slot. <laughs> um, cat who is the closest when the battle uh, is like wrapping up manages to sort of tear the torques off of these guys uh which means that you guys get uh two jeweled torques or uh 60 each and they are Ooh. worn slash worn slash neck or pack one so you could, if your neck slot is open, toss these on your neck to carry them rather than putting it, putting them in a pouch or a backpack. I don't know. This garlic might still come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> what is it doing? Controlled by the by bones. The Repels oh, vampires. Oh, it doesn't do that, Steve. Wait, <laughs> what? I checked the book. That, uh, when, when the other group was doing their character creation, Awesome was like, why is garlic so shit? And I was like, it repels vampires. And he's like, no, it doesn't. And then he showed me the book. <laughs> All it is, it's a it's a supply for a cooking test. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I thought it repelled so I, vampires. So, so then I told the Hassan, and I will tell this to you, to you now. If you face a vampire, I will I'll count it as a supply during a during a conflict of vampires or a test against <laughs> vampires. But <laughs> but yeah, default it's not. <laughs> so, that's, that's so funny. That's so weird. It's so what you're telling me is that you are bending the rules to make it useful, opposed to being a shit item. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's so weird. Wow. I don't know why they. Why if they, there's why, vampires, why would I guess they not like, repel them? That just exactly. makes sense. It doesn't make any sense. And, why and is especially the only food item added to the starting gear. <laughs> it's specifically <laughs> garlic. Huh? And no, also, there's there's spice. wolf's bane in the starting gear. Like, yeah, that's uh, true. Make any sense, bro. I don't get it. I don't understand. <laughs> okay, whatever. Moving on. Yeah, you could toss away your. Go on. Does anyone have any open neck slots? I, do. I don't. I can uh, toss my. Garlic. I have an open pouch, so I can toss it in there. I also have open. Pouch. I can throw out my garlic. I'm not strongly <laughs> attached to it. <laughs> okay. You can hold on to it because we have open space right now. Like we have open spaces, so why don't we put it in Ian and Neville's pouches? Respectively. This was so my father's you, garlic. Each of you is a jeweled torch. Each torque, each, sorry, torque. Each torque is worth 6D, and uh, it's a pretty compact 60. That's that's a valuable piece of treasure. Yeah, that uh, is nice. Treasure, treasure uh, if you can maximize the, uh, the worth per inventory slot, that's really good, and this is really high value. Um, I'd like to say, Adam, this game feels market. so much like Darkest Dungeon. Just like, I'm sure it does. Everyone always says that, apparently, on the internet. Like, the whole, like, managing inventory space to, like, get the supplies you need to make things easier, but also bring it back as much treasure, treasure as you can. Right. And then as you use up your inventory, you can fit more treasure. Like, it, it reminds me a lot of Darkest Dungeon game loop. Yeah, it is low. Okay, so, uh, uh, what do you guys want to do next now? Uh, I was chicken. thinking we might call it soon. Call it soon? Okay, that's okay. Yeah. We can certainly call it. Um, do you... Were you guys thinking of camping? Because typically the game recommends stopping at a camping phase so that you don't have to remember what happened in this uh, adventure phase as much. But if you don't want to camp, we don't have to do that because 
That's not camp. I don't think we really need to camp. Exhausted. Yeah. yeah. Ideally, we earn more checks before we camp. That way, we can like yeah do stuff. Okay. That's yeah. Totally fine. Okay. Sounds good. It is eleven o'clock. It sounds like it does seem like a pretty decent chance to uh sorry point to wrap things up. Uh, that means hopefully the next session that we will finish this. Uh, before we go, we have to actually do end of session like wrap up stuff, which is getting rewards. Ooh. Um, yeah, ooh, exactly. Reward me, daddy. Ooh, we love rewards. Oh, yeah, all right, um... <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. I think some of us might like rewards more than others. Um, on your character sheets, there's a spot where you can enter both current fate points and persona points and used fate points and persona points. The used mm -hmm. in both of those categories should be zero right now because you guys haven't used any. Using these... Wait, it's current and total. I don't see an option for used. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, it's just oh, it's total, total spent. Game, but... It's total spent. So oh, total spent. I see, I see. Yeah. Current total versus total spent. So gotcha. you guys are going to add to the current total. The total spent should be zero for in both those categories. So you can go, guys can go ahead and put a zero under the total on the on the right side of the fate and persona trackers. On the left side is what you're gonna earn now. So we're gonna go through everyone's everyone one at a time, and we're going to figure out whether you whether which one of these applies. I guarantee you guys are gonna earn rewards in to some respect. Um, you confused, Malia, because I can see you flicking around. I'm so confused. Do you see in the center of your of the page you're on right now it says Torchbearer in big letters. Yeah. So underneath that it says Fate and Persona. That's what we're talking about right now. You've got two little trackers, right? Like, uh, you can like put in a number. On the right side of both of those, under, on the right side of Fate and on the right side of Persona, just enter a zero. Because you haven't spent any Fate points and you haven't spent any Persona points because you haven't uh, been able to get any yet. Perfect, exactly. All right, so now, when you earn any, you guys are gonna earn fate and persona points. You're gonna enter them on the left side, and then as you spend them, they move from the left to the right. Uh, and then ne the next session will go into how you can use fate and persona points and go over a couple more rules about how they work because this session you couldn't use them, so I didn't worry about teaching them. All right. So this is every session we will do this, unless I feel like the session was too short, but this was not too short of a session. All right. So everyone, I want you to look at your belief, and you're gonna tell me. If you felt like you acted on your belief, you did actions that were driven by your beliefs during a test, or a good idea, or you just strongly role-played that belief, um, or during a conflict, then you get a fate point. On the other hand, if you played against your belief, you did you acted against your belief in a dramatic fashion and showed how your inner struggle, like you struggled with that decision, but you had to do it because you needed to get treasure, you needed to save a friend, whatever it was, you will get a persona point. So Steve, what's your belief? Uh, I will do what is necessary to ensure my own survival. Okay, do you feel like you played into that belief or you did you work against it? I think I played into it more than against it. Yeah, I also can't think of any instances where you were like, fuck, I have to, I have to, I want to be, like, pres preserve myself, but I can't right now. I couldn't mm -hmm. think of any times where you said that, so I agree. So go ahead and give yourself a fate point. Sanjay, what's your belief? Um, let me read it again. It's, uh, I'm winning and fighting are the only set of fine things left in the dull world, and I say yes, I win. So those give yourself ways. a fate point. Neville? Uh, the pursuit of knowledge is the most noblest of paths, no matter what toll it may cost. Definitely Think did I that. Mostly... Fate point yeah. there. Ian? I must protect my loved ones and those that will help me do so. Yeah, um, I think you I... defended and you were getting people back up, so that sounds like something you did, rather than not do. So go ahead and give your point, and then, uh, Malia. I strive to make friends and steal from bullies. Okay. Steal from bullies. Enough, Malia you did steal from bullies. Oh yeah, she did steal those torques. I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, at the very the end. Torques. I was gonna say she. I was gonna say she worked <laughs> against her belief, so she got the persona point. But no, I think you worked towards your belief because you did steal from a bully. So go ahead and give yourself a fate point. So on that left box, you're gonna take that up to one. All right. So now we're gonna talk about goals. If you worked towards your goal, 
you get a fate point. And if you accomplished your goal, you get a persona point. So, Sandra, what was your goal? Kill the monster um, took Jora? Yeah. So you worked towards that, so give yourself a fate point. Neville? Cover the secrets of the dolmen. Still figuring that out, let's give ourselves one yep. of the dolmen? Yes. Well, okay, wait, is the is the dungeon the crypt or the, like... The dungeon, the dungeon is... was specifically the archway. Yeah, the dungeon okay, I, I intended the whole dungeon, I just didn't dungeon. understand the term. Okay. All right. No, no, just the I rock. I'm gonna say, Neville, <laughs> mm -hmm. that you actually accomplished your goal. You know okay. what this crypt is about. It's a pa the, the pathway to immortality, the resting place of Hathor Vash. There's a couple mm -hmm. secrets that you guys haven't figured out, but they're not actually fundamental to the to the meaning of the place itself. So Neville, you accomplished your goal. You can go ahead and take cool. a persona point instead. Uh, Ian, Dope. what's your goal? Rescue Jora. Fate point. Uh, Malia, I think you had the same goal, right? Rescue Jora? Yeah. So fate point for you and Steve? Uh, earn the respect of the people of Skogenby. Working towards that. Give yourself a fate point. All right, so... Now we're going. Now these uh, next two aren't. It's not going to be either fate or persona. You can earn both. So, uh, wait a second. Oh yeah, here we go. Fate points. Um, anyone who benefited from their instinct gets a fate point. So I believe. I believe. I think Neville. Neville. I think it was just his. me, right? Uh yeah. Yeah, because everyone else has camping-related ones, and no one camped, right? Or didn't Sanjay have one for checking yeah. for danger? Or the battle? Wait, wait, you're talking about Hella. Wait, which one? We're talking about your the... instinct. What's your instinct? Sanjay's instinct is to repair his armor. Oh, yeah, okay, never mind, never mind. I thought it was something different. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was just Neville. It was just Neville, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. So Neville, you're gonna go go ahead and give yourself a fate point. Cool. Okay. Uh. The last fate point is for if if you made a, it's called gallows humor. Basically, basically, if you made a joke while staring down certain death, and people laughed, you get a fate point. What? <laughs> Sanjay. Sanjay made a remember. joke that I thought was funny. Um, fuck. It was a he made a media reference, and I found it humorous. And I'm blanking on what it was. Oh, <laughs> uh, what was it? He made a media <laughs> reference. Oh yeah, no, no. I do. Wait, what did I say? Yeah, you know, you're right. You're I, right. Sure. What did you Check say? What did Sanjay, say? what was your media <laughs> reference? <laughs> so, does anyone remember any gallows humor that occurred? Any, any, um... any, or well, really for this one, I'm gonna say if someone said something funny and everyone burst out laughing, you gotta you. That's good enough for me. I don't care whether it was Jesus one. That was it too. Jesus. Who made that, joke? <laughs> that was me. That was you, Sanjay? Yes, that was me. What do you mean? I think it was, yeah. Okay. Sanjay, you I don't remember, though. go ahead and take a fate point for humor. Uh you can only earn that once, so anyone else remember any particularly funny moments that I deserve to re I should reward you for? Uh I told Matt about this, uh reward and he thought it was great <laughs> <laughs> my memory doesn't go back that far i don't what memory so exactly. okay uh, i think it I, it doesn't sound like anyone else remembers any particularly funny jokes maybe maybe when we look back on this we might just find one and then we can add it posthumously not posthumously <laughs> posthumously <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> all right uh like later all right so now we got to, uh, one for adam give yourself that's, a that's all the fake points yeah i get a fake point now. uh what's it called uh now we got some persona points to distribute um so you you could get a persona point for uh standing up for your creed in a moment of crisis you guys don't have creeds yet so we're skipping that one until you reach level three and earn a creed uh you guys need to pick an MVP, the person who made the most critical dice roll of the session. You guys pick. I don't get to have a say in this. Uh, I don't know what back about the dice also roll. Also, have to pick a, the team worker uh, reward. That is the per the party picks a person who worked the hardest for the good of the group as a whole. And that the MVP and the team worker can't be the same person. And once again, I get no say. So you guys have to pick who amongst you is the MVP, had the most critical role. Who is the team worker who helped the group the most? Uh, what was the role? To, maybe Malia's scout role to find that secret passage? Oh, yeah. 
as a MVP? I mean, was that important? I did get us almost killed. I mean, <laughs> we did yes. We into a trap and then we a bunch of skeletons, but... <laughs> but we also wouldn't have, like... We definitely would have missed that otherwise. Yeah. And we got two torques out of it, you know? Okay. That's, That's the treasure. True. Okay, Malia, yeah. it sounds like they're making you the MVP. So under Persona, you're going to give yourself a Persona point. So on the left side, go ahead and tick that off by one. And then who's I'm your team worker? You can't see Malia. Who was it? I'm leaning towards Neville for team worker. Yeah. I'd yeah, I feel Neville. like Neville got a lot of the information. Especially figuring out all like the ritual stuff and all that. Can I do most That's least cooperative? My job. Cooperative. <laughs> <laughs> Sanjay, you lose a persona point. All right. <laughs> Sounds like they're making you the team worker, so give yourself a persona point. All right. All right. So these are points you can spend for extra bonuses during tests during the next session. It is important that you spend these rather than hoarding them. Spending them is how you level up. Once you once you guys have spent three oh. fate points and three persona points, spent them, then you will level up to level two. Nice. Oh. So it is very cool. important you do not do not hoard these. Like honestly, it's not a bad idea. Try and make it your goal next session to spend everything you just got so you can earn mm -hmm. more and keep leveling. I mean, is there a cap to the amount that you can have? Uh, or no. I don't think so. I, I have to check okay. here, but I'm pretty sure there's no cap to the current that you can have. There's a cap to how much you can use them in certain tests, but like, um, but like, so you can't like hoard like 50 fate points and then get 50 dice on a roll, but like, <laughs> uh, but like, uh, I don't think there's a cap on how many you can actually have. But if you hoarded 50 I would love, fate, I would like, love 50 like dice. One, and everyone else would be like level 7 or 8, and it would, it would just suck. But you dump them all at once and gain six levels immediately. <laughs> yeah, that would be hell. Actually, leveling in this game is very simple. You get one benefit. It's like so straightforward. Like it's like the nice. in the world. Uh, you can't level inside of an adventure. We will have the goal. Hopefully, actually, okay. for you guys is since this did take more than one session. Hopefully, by the next session, you guys will have been able to earn three fate points and three persona points. And you'll be able to level at the first time you go to town. That'll be really nice. Uh, now that you guys know what goes into earning fake points and persona points, you can try and focus on playing with or playing against your belief, working towards your goals or accomplishing your goals. That one you don't have that much control over, but that's one thing. Uh, making funny joke. Uh, <laughs> gonna, gonna have to get a joke book. Working hard for your teammates. like Those are things you can actively work towards to try and earn these. The belief is the main source of your yeah. Playing for or against your belief is the main source of fate and persona points, respectively. Uh, and then once you earn a crisis, that's a great source of persona points too. But that's going to be oh, that's a little while off. Um, that is all for today's session. Um, I'm going to thank you guys for being very patient with me because obviously this is my first time DMing this. I expect that the the way we play this game will get more efficient over time and like. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. Your your guys understand. Everyone's understanding the game will get better. Like, you hopefully you guys will eventually be able to walk into a room, do a bunch of like talk to each other a bunch, and everyone will have like something to contribute, some way of like providing for the group and stuff. And also, hopefully, won't make as many mistakes in combat. It's a good start. <laughs> uh, we, we did it perfectly. Hopefully, we can pick this up. Uh, next. Steve, you should just listen to your gut. I really should. Uh, Steve, don't, don't ever listen to your teammates in the again. Future. All right, yeah, we um, just gotta make Steve our combat captain. No, 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 no. Oh, You're the one that dissuaded him, not me. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop the recording. GG's, <laughs> everyone.